Welcome to This Day in Baseball. We bring you everything from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat and every milestone and oddball event in between. Today's game is courtesy of ThisDayInBaseball.com. You can come for a peek, make friends for a lifetime. Before, after, and during the game, check out the links below the video and visit the player pages, parks, and teams as you listen to this blast from the past. You can catch us on every social media platform. And I want to do a special thanks to MLB Classic Radio Archives for this broadcast. Now, let's play ball. Playing second base, Ron Hunt. 
The third batter will be Duke Schneider in right field. And in the cleanup spot, Frank Thomas in left field. Batting fifth at first base, Ed Cranepool. The sixth man in the batting order will be the third baseman, Jardy Neal. Batting seventh and catching, Clarence Coleman. And the eighth man in the batting order will be shortstop Al McGran. Moran playing at shortstop batting in the eighth position will be followed by the pitcher, Al Jackson. The New York Mets have a record so far this year of six wins and nine losses. They are eighth in the National League race. A win tonight could give them seventh place. They have won six of their last seven ball games. Pittsburgh Pirates are in third place in the National League race, and they have a record of eight wins and five losses. They are one half game behind the San Francisco Giants and the St. Louis Cardinals. So it's going to be a fine ball game at the start of this three-game series. After the series, the Mets come home to open up a long homestand. They will open up against the Los Angeles Dodgers in the first of two night games. They'll be playing the Dodgers on Monday night, the 29th of April, and Tuesday night, the 30th of April. There go the Pittsburgh Pirates on the field. Well, it's a good night for baseball, and of course, the big news right now in the National League, at least, the enforcement of the balk rule the one-second pause has been relaxed. The president of the National League, Warren Giles, has just indicated to the umpires in the National League that they should not enforce the one-second full stop. All the pitcher has to do now is come to a momentary pause. Pittsburgh Pirates, incidentally, have been charged with eight box so far this year, six of them by Bob Friend, and that's a new National League record. The Mets have had 12 called against them, so both clubs evidently happy that the enforcement of the one-second stop rule has been relaxed. Right now, it's Al McBean warming up in the mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He makes his home in the Virgin Islands. He had a fine year last year for Pittsburgh. He won a total of 15 games and lost only 10. He'll be opposed by Al Jackson. Forbes Field, a big ballpark. It's 300 feet down the right field line. A very high screen down the line extending to 375 feet in straightaway right field. In center field, 436 feet. Moving on around the left center, it's 406 feet. And right down the left field line, it's 360 feet. And, and now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Pennsylvania. The New York Mets against the Pittsburgh Pirates. In the National League, one game in. The Philadelphia Phillies defeated the Cubs 5-2. The winning one on the Philadelphia side was Art Mahaffey. The losing pitcher was Hobby. Home runs by Covington, Callison, and Williams. Covington started the day off, leading the National League. That's the only action in the National League. Cincinnati scheduled at Houston. Milwaukee at San Francisco. St. Louis at Los Angeles. Now we're all set to go here at Forbes Field. And to bring you the play-by-play -play is Lindsey Nelson. Al McBean starts the motion. The pitch to Hickman. It's low for ball one. The umpire behind the plate is Doug Harvey. Lee Wire is at first. Al Barlick, the senior umpire in this quartet, is at second. And Ed Vargo is the umpire on to third. Right hand to Al McBean. Again with the pitch to Hickman. And it's low for ball two. Jim Hickman with a batting average of 326 leads the Mets in that department. He has three doubles, two triples, three home runs, and 12 runs batted in. Elmo Plaskett behind the plate tonight for the Pittsburgh Pirates. There's a pitch fired low, and it's out at 3-0 now to Jim Hickman. 
Charlie Hemus is coaching around at first for the New York Mets, and Cookie Lavagetta around at third. That is the usual alignment. Al McBain now with the 3 0 pitch, and it's low and away. It comes on back. No damage done. There are no base runners except for the fact that Hickman goes down to first on the base on balls as Elmo Plaskett retrieves. And the Mets have a base runner with nobody out and second baseman Ron Hunt coming up. So McBean has walked Hickman on four pitch balls. That calls for a very brief conference at the mound. Bill Mazeroski coming over from second and Don Clendenin from first. Ricky Ron Hunt with a batting average of 303. Has two doubles, one triple, one home run, and five runs batted in. Here is a throw over to first that is not in time. Ron Hunt is in and waiting. McBean with the pitch and it's low for ball one. Bean so far has had five pitches, all of them balls. He gets set, looks in the basket for a sign here. Set as Hickman leads off the bag at first. Here's the pitch, and it's low for ball. 2-0 to Ron Hutt. The Pittsburgh Pirates with an infield of Don Clendon at first base, Bill Mazeroski at second, Dick Schofield at short, Bob Bailey at third. Ted Savage is in left field, Bill Verdon in center, Roberto Clemente is in right. Is in there for a call strike. It's two and one, and the roar you hear is an appreciative reception uh, from the crowd of the first strike of the ball game. Two and one now to Ron Hunt with Duke Snyder on deck for the Mets. Jim Hickman again takes his lead. McBean with the pitch, and it's a call strike two. Two and two. Ron Hunt was purchased conditionally from the Milwaukee Braves. New York Mets must notify the Braves by midnight May 8th whether or not they intend to keep him. Here's a swing and a ground ball foul on the first baseline. It's out of play. 2-2. And as President George Weiss of the Mets said this afternoon, if they had to make the decision right now, there certainly would be no question about whether or not they'd keep him. Ron Hunt has been red hot recently as the New York Mets have taken six of their last seven games. Throw over and it's not in time. McBean again comes set as Hickman takes his lead. He's running. Here's a swing and a foul pop. And it is taken by McBean and he throws on over to first. Took it on one hop, then fired on over to first, and it's a fair ball, I beg your pardon. On one big hop, it was down the third baseline, and McBean fielded the ball through on the first in time to get Hunt, but Hickman, on the hit and run, moved safely to second. So if you're scoring, it goes one to three, as Ron Hunt chopped that one. And it stayed fair as McBean came down to grab it and fire on the first in time to get him. And Duke Snyder's coming up now with a runner at second, and one man out for the Mets. No score, and we're in the top half of the first inning. Frank Thomas moves to the on-deck circle. Run fired low for ball. Al McBean was hit hard his last time out here at Forbes Field. That was Sunday against Cincinnati. They reached him for eight hits, got five runs in two and a third innings. He lost eight to three. Snyder steps back out of Schofield at shortstop. Runs Hickman back to the bag at second. McBean with the pitch. Swung on. It's a ground ball. A comeback. It's taken by McBean. Looks the run. It throws the first in time. No advance. Smash right back to the box. Two men out. Thomas coming up. Hickman holding it second. Mike Thomas back in his hometown tonight with a batting average of 250. He has two doubles, two home runs, six runs batted in. 
Yesterday, when the New York Mets defeated the Chicago Cubs by a score of three to two, Thomas batted in all three of the Mets runs. Single in the first inning to drive in a run and later on hit a two-run homer. Bean checks and the pitch to Frank and it is low and uh, coming on back, but Bach was indicated. Bach has been called by the umpire behind the plate, Doug Harvey. So we've had the first Bach call of the night. Doug Harvey has called a Bach on Al McBean that moves Hickman from second to third with two men up. As Ralph Kiner indicated today, Mr. Warren Giles, the president of the National League, did indicate that the rigid enforcement of the controversial balk rule would be slackened and relaxed. McBean now turns to work straight away. Pitch to Thomas is low. Ball ball. One and oh, the count to Thomas. That pitch is low for ball two. Two men out. Jim Hickman, the base runner at third. Ed Cranepool is now on deck for the Mets. Frank Thomas, of course, came to the major leagues with the Pittsburgh Pirates and first game start him right here at Forbes Field. That pitch a little high and a little tight. It's 3 and 0. Mr. Warren Giles, in his statement today, said, I am instructing our umpires to require the pitcher in a set position to come to a stop, but to disregard the requirement of at least one second. This will be a 3 0 pitch to Frank Thomas. Fired right down the pike for a call strike one. It's 3 and 1. is waiting. It's low, ball four, he walked it. That is the second walk given up this inning. Gives the runner, the Mets runners at first and third. And will bring up 18-year-old first baseman Ed Cranepool. The rookie from the Bronx has a batting average of an even 300. He has one triple, one home run, two runs batted in. left-hand batter. Pitch is outside for a ball. Double barrel action in the bullpen of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Danny Murtaugh has Harvey Haddock, a left-hander, and Tom Sturdivant, a right-hander. Both veteran performers throwing in the bullpen. McBean checked, and the pitch is outside for a ball. Two men out, runners at first and third for the Mets. No score and a count of two balls and no strikes. They hit Cranepool. Charlie Neal on deck. Both the Met base runners put on there by Al McBean. Comes set. And here's the pitch. It's in there for a call strike. Cranepool was taking it. Two and one. Very little wind blowing here at Forks Field tonight. Big flag in center field, just barely moving. And now time has been called as the ball gets loose from the bullpen area and rolls out into left field. Ed Vargo came across the diamond yelling time. I'll tell you, these days in the National League, when an umpire raises his hand and starts moving, anything can happen. Everybody's a little gun shy. Here's a pitch, swung on and foul, off to the left side and out of play. Two and two is the count. Charlie Neal is on deck for the Mets.
Magbean getting settled on the mound, looking into Elmo Plaskett behind the plate. Runners lead, first and third. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and a tie and away. It's a full count. So Frank Thomas at first will be moving on the pitch with two men out. The Mets trying to cash a scoring opportunity in the top half of the first inning. Hickman, the base runner at third, leads down the line. Thomas moves. Here's a pitch. Swung on it. Fouled off. It's out of play. The count holds it three and two to head Crane Pool. In the National League, McBean has a lifetime record of 19 wins and 13 losses. Last year, he had 15 big victories for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Getting settled now for a payoff pitch to Ed Cranepool. And it's low. He walked in, and the bases are loaded with Charlie Neal coming up. Danny Murtaugh is on his way to the mound. He has Harvey Haddock and Tom Sturdivant, both long men in the bullpen. Alvin O'Neill McBean awaiting the arrival of the skipper to talk things over. It's not exactly new because uh, McBean has had a history of early inning trouble. There have been some very great pitchers uh, down through the pages of time who have had that sort of trouble. But once settled down, have been able to come on, and that has been the history of McBean. Once settled down and once through the trouble, he can come on over the long route as indicated by his 15 victories last year. And for that reason, Danny Murtaugh is going to leave him in there and let him try to pitch himself out of trouble here. Charlie Neal has a batting average of only 170. He has three doubles and three runs batted in. And Charlie has begun to hit the ball hard of late. In Chicago yesterday, he doubled and was on base when Thomas hit his two-run homer. With the bases loaded, Neal smacked one on the button, on which Kenny Hubbs made a fantastic catch. So he's up there now, and McBean, with the pitch, goes high for ball one. The Mets have loaded him up here in the top half of the first inning. Jim Hickman, the base runner at third. Frank Thomas at second. Rookie Ed Cranepool at first. Pitch to Neal is low for a ball. It's 2-0. Oh. Action continuing in the Pirates bullpen. Neal takes a look down to Cookie Lavagetta, the sign man at third. Here's a pitch low for a ball. It's three balls, no strikes to Charlie Neal. Choo-choo Coleman is on deck. Neal takes a look down to Cookie, but uh, you can bet your bottom dollar he'll be taking this pitch all the way. Bases loaded, two men out. Charlie swings the bat. Mac Bean with the pitch, and it's right down the pike. He was taken all the way at three and one. Takes a look at Cookie again. Here's a three-one pitch. It misses everybody. It's ball four. A run is scored. And rounding third is Thomas holding up as Plaskett retrieves and fires to the pitcher covering. The Mets still have the bases loaded as they have scored the first run of the ball game. Lead one nothing. And right now, in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. This is the voice of the Mets in the Northeast. WGY Schenectady. 52 degrees. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Kiner and Bob Murphy at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. Danny Mercer has gone back to the mound, and this time he's going to go to the bullpen. He's going to go for the kitten. The left-hander is getting the call. Harvey Haddock will be brought in here. A veteran National League performer in relief of Alvin McBean, who just walked. Charlie Neal to drive in the first run as Hickman crossed the plate. Bases are still loaded, and Choo Choo Coleman... Will be coming up, so McBean has pitched two-thirds of an inning. 
Given up one run so far. Still responsible for the three he's leaving. He has allowed no hit. Struck out none. And walked four. So Harvey Haddock comes on now. This is Haddock's fifth game appearance. He has pitched eight and two-thirds innings in which he has given up nine hits, three runs. He has walked none and struck out five. to warm up here. Base is loaded for the Mets. Two men out. Left-hander Choo Choo Coleman will be coming up. Haddix is a left-hander, of course. So while he warms up, let's take a look. This afternoon in the National League, Philadelphia Phillies defeated the Chicago Cubs 5-2 as Mahaffey threw a three-hitter at the Cubs. Uh, for the Phillies, five runs on eight hits, no errors. For Chicago, two runs, three hits, no errors. Glenn Hobby started with the loser. Brewer in the seventh, shoots in the ninth. Wes Covington hitting 429 right now, by the way. Had a homer in the fourth with two on. Johnny Callis, a homer in the fifth with nobody on. Billy Williams, homer in the sixth with one on to account for the two Cub runs. Cincinnati is scheduled at Houston. Milwaukee is scheduled at San Francisco. St. Louis scheduled on the coast against the Los Angeles Dodgers. In the American League, the end of six and a half, it is the Washington Senators, eight, and the Kansas City Athletics, six. That is the first game of a doubleheader. The end of an inning and a half, the Angels won, the Orioles nothing. The end of an inning and a half, Minnesota Twins two, the Detroit Tigers nothing. Right now, Choo Choo Coleman steps in. Haddock starts the motion. Here's the pitch, and it's high for ball one. Frank Thomas is at third. Ed Greenville at second. Charlie Neal at first. The Mets lead by a score of one to nothing. Tom Sturdivant continues to throw in the bullpen for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Al Moran is on deck. Haddock with the pitch to Coleman. Brings it in there for a call strike. Maddox moves out the dirt, out there on the mound. Choo Choo Coleman is batting 188. He has one run batted in. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Swung on and foul, off and out of play. 1 and 2. nothing. We're still in the top half of the first inning. And this is the first game of a three-game series. The Mets will be here again tomorrow afternoon and again for a single in on Sunday afternoon. The 1-2 pitch to Coleman. Swung on and missed. The left-hander got Chuchu and gets the Pirates out of trouble. In the top half of the first, the Mets got one run on no hit, no pirate errors, and three men left. The end of a half inning at Forbes Field, the score is the Mets won Pirates, nothing. You know, on my way up to the broadcasting booth, I've been noticing more and more fans with Viceroy's new slide top case. You know, it's really something great. It's crush proof like a box, but it works far easier. Slides right open and slides shut tight. One finger does it. It's the greatest improvement in cigarette packaging since the flip open box, and it's exclusive with Viceroy. And only Viceroy has got the taste that's right. What do I mean by the taste that's right? Well, if you smoke all seven leading filter brands, you'll find some taste too strong, like the filter wasn't there at all. And others taste too light. They take all the fun and flavor out of smoking. But Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the taste that's right. Smoke Viceroy in the exclusive fine top case or the familiar soft pack. You'll like them. In the bottom of the first, the Pirates will send up Dick Schofield, Ted Savage, and Roberto Clemente to face Al Jackson, a young left-hander on the mound for the Mets. 
Jackson is 27 years of age from Houston, Texas. This year, thus far, he has won one and lost one. Last year, he won eight and lost 20. He had four shutouts. Lifetime record in the National League, 10 and 21. Against the Pirates, his former teammates last year, he went 0 and 2. He was an expansion draft selection of the Mets off the roster of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Six Schofield coming up with a batting average of 306. Two doubles and three runs batted in. He's a switch hitter, so he'll be batting right here against the left-hander Al Jackson. And that's playing an infield of Ed Crane Poole at first, Ron Hunt at second, Al Moran at short, and Charlie Neal at third. Frank Thomas in left, Jim Hickman in center, Duke Snyder in right. Choo Choo Coleman is the catcher. Schofield chokes up on the bat just a little bit. Jackson with the pitch, and it's inside for ball one. Dick Schofield is a young man who has been hanging around in this Pirate Ball Club for a long time, waiting for the chance to step in and play regularly. He got the chance briefly in September 1960 when the Pirates made their pennant run, and he performed admirably in replacing Dick Groat. Pitch misses outside for a ball. So this year, with Groat gone to the St. Louis Cardinals, Schofield got his chance, and he is in there batting over 300. Count of two balls and no strikes. Breaking ball that misses. It's 3-0. and So apparently, uh, the lack of control is a little contagious as Al Jackson has got out 3-0 and on Schofield. This pitch is low, and Jackson has walked Dick Schofield on four pitch balls just as McBean Walked the Met leadoff man, Jim Hickman, on four pitch balls. Al Jackson was initially scouted and signed for the Pirates by Jack Berger, who is now the very well-known Pirates public relations director. At that time, Jack Berger was business manager for the Bucks Farm Club at Waco, Texas. Jackson was born at Waco, Texas. This is a called strike. Ted Savage, playing left field tonight, was acquired by the Pittsburgh Pirates from the Phillies in the deal that sent Don Hope to Philadelphia. Savage is hitting 250. He has been up only eight times previously. Breaking ball, low and inside. It's 1-1. Nobody out for the Pirates with Schofield at first, and Roberto Clemente is on deck now. Pittsburgh Pirates have won four of their last six games. They're starting a long homestand. New York Mets, of course, uh, with this series in Pittsburgh, are winding up this road trip. He's at the wall, and this one is gone for a home run for Ted Savage. A two-run homer for Savage. Schofield comes on around to score. Savage comes on around to score. That is his first home run of the season, his first home run on behalf of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and it puts Pittsburgh out in front here by a score two to one. With nobody out, Roberto Clemente is coming up. Ted Savage teeing off. With a drive over the left field wall. Clemente is batting 262. Right hand batter. Here's a swing and a miss. He has two doubles, one triple, one home run, and he's batted in six runs. There is now action in the New York Mets bullpen. Tracy Stallard is up and throwing. Here's a breaking ball. A comebacker to Jackson. Pivots and pegs on to first. Clemente has grounded out from pitcher to first. There's one away. Don Clendenon is the batter. This is the first baseman who replaced Dick Stewart in the lineup this season for the Pittsburgh Pirates as Stewart was traded down to the Boston Red Sox. And they force the future stardom for this fella. He is hitting 283. A double, a triple, four home runs, and seven runs batted in. Pitch is low for a ball. Don Clendenin. Al 
Al Jackson has a sign. Here's the pitch inside for Ball. You know, for years, Bob Skinner has been an outstanding performer for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And this year, with young Ted Savage on the club, Danny Murtaugh has been platooning Savage and Skinner. Skinner's a left-hand batter. Savage bats right. And so that is the reason he has Savage in there tonight. And uh, that is why the Pirates are out in front right now by a score of 2-1. to one. Slow curveball. Swung on and fouled off. 2-1. and one. One man out, nobody on base. Al Jackson, again with the pitch. Breaking low and inside. Three and one. Don Clendenin, tall and rangy. In and waiting. The three-one pitch. He is in there for a call strike. Cut the outside corner. It's out full now. It's three and two. So Jackson faced with the prospect here of a payoff pitch to Don Clendenin with one man out. As the sign starts the motion, and it's outside. Ball four. He walked him. So Clendenin goes to first. With a base on balls. The second walk given up by Al Jackson. Coming up is Bill Mazeroski. Maz is hitting 273. One double, one triple, one home run, and five runs batted in. Mazeroski's a right hand batter. Then Dunnan leads. Cranepool holds against the runner. Here's the pitch. Little tight for ball one. Mazeroski, of course, is best known for the home run that he hit in the bottom half of the ninth inning against the New York Yankees right here at Forbes Field in the seventh game of the 1960 World Series to give the Pirates the World Championship. That pitch is low on his short hop. Choo-choo blocks it, can't find it, now does. No advance by Clendenin at first. Choo-choo scrambling to find the baseball. It is in the dirt. He knocked it down and uh, then couldn't locate it right there by the plate. But there's no advance. Kept it from going through, and it's 2-0. and oh. Al Jackson has given up two walks here in the uh, bottom half of the first. Previously, he had walked only six in 24 and a third inning. That pitch is in the dirt again. Chuchu has to dig it out. So it's gone 3-0 and oh and out of Maz. Long before Mazeroski hit that very famous home run, he was one of the finest fielding second basemen in the game and one of the finer all-around performers. And Dunnan leads. That pitch is outside, and Maz has walked on four pitch balls. That is the third walk given up by Jackson. We're still in the bottom half of the first inning. Al McBean walked four. And the top half of the first, including walking in one run before he was removed. Now Jackson has walked three. He walked Schofield, then Savage homered over the left field wall. He got Clemente on a ground ball back to the mound. Walked Clendenin, walked Mazeroski, and now Elmo Plaskett's coming up. Plaskett's been up nine times this season, has one hit, one run batted in. Pitch is low, and Clendenin goes to third, and he is safe at third base. As the throw goes down there, and Charlie Neal with the tag as he dives in head first, but uh, he is safe at third. He was running on Jackson, and big time Clendenin with long strides, eight up the distance down there. Choo Choo fired it on down to Charlie Neal, but score that as a stolen base for Don Clendenin, which gives the Pittsburgh Pirates runners at first and third. Still only one man out. And a count of ball, one to Elmo Plaskett. New York Mets keep the infield at double play depth with one man out here. Harris lead two to one. Here's a swing and a ground ball going foul and on down past Frank Osiak to coach at third. Ron Northy is the coach at first for the Pittsburgh Pirates.
Down to one ball and one strike. It's been a wild and woolly first inning here at Fort Seal. Breaking ball swung on. Fouled off to the right side and out of play. It's one and two. Harris two and the Mets one. Tomorrow afternoon, we'll be on the air at 1.30 p.m. New York time, and Sunday, we'll be on at 2 p.m. New York time. Al Jackson now, up and set. Here's a pitch swung on foul on the right field line, going into the stands and out of play. Elmo Plaskett getting into the powered lineup now. Uh, Smokey Burgess and Pagliaroni both ailing at this time, and uh, so he's getting a big chance. Last year at Asheville in the Sally League, played everything but uh, shortstop and uh, pitcher, and he won the Sally League batting title of the Most Valuable Player Award. He felt this one deep to left. If it stays fair, it's going to be way back there, and it is a foul ball. Plaskett got around on that one and pulled it down the left corner out in the portions of Shenley Park, but foul. So he comes back to the plate with a count of one ball and two strikes. On the basis of his performance at Asheville last year, Pirates are extremely high on Elmo Plaskett. They call him Mo. Again, runners lead at first and third. Pitch is tight. Hit the deck. It's two and two. Bill Verdon is on deck for the Pirates. This is the first meeting of the season between the Mets and the Pirates. Jackson looking in for a sign from Choo Choo Coleman. Here's a pitch swung on. It is a ground ball going up the middle, going through for a base hit. When Dunn comes on to score, Maserati holds it second, and Plaskett is on with a ground single up the middle with a run batted in, and the Pirates lead by a score of three to one. Still only one man out, and Bill Verdon is coming up now for Pittsburgh. Builds a left-hand batter, hitting 292. Two doubles, five runs batted in. That was the second hit for the power toss Jackson, combined with the three walks that he has issued. Here's a swing and a miss. Strike one. outside for a ball. Mazeroski, the base runner at second. Mo Plaskett, the base runner at first. Jackson with the pitch. Swung on and missed. Breaking ball. One and two. Rookie Bob Bailey is now on deck for the Pirates. We're still in the bottom half of the first inning with the Pirates leading by a score of 3-1. to one. Here's a 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball. Miss low. 2-2. Two, two. Jackson takes a look around the outfield. Still only one man out for the Pirates here. Casey Stengel on the top step of the dugout. Wondering what he can do to stop all this. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Oh, and away. 
It's full at three and two. Runners at first and second, one man out. Center fielder Bill Verdon waiting. Jackson up and set. Steps off the rubber. And the crowd, of course, starts to cry a ball. Now he's up and set again. And not going here's a pitch swung on. It's a fly ball to left field. Thomas moving over. Hickman's there. Thomas puts it away. No advance. So Burton has slid to left. Two men out. And that'll bring up 20-year-old rookie Bob Bailey. He gets a hand. He's batting 277. Two doubles, two home runs, and four runs batted in. This is the young man who took over the third base position, vacated by Don Hope. It was the confidence that the Pirates had in the future of this young fellow that made it possible for him to deal Hope. Right-hand batter. Runners lead first and second. Pitch to Bailey. is in there for a call strike. As is the case with so very many young ball players, of whom much is expected. If there has been any great deficiency in his play, it has been his tendency to take pitches. But uh, that happens with young ball players a great deal of the time. Edwin decked him a little tight. It's one and one. Two men out, two men on. Pirates three, the Mets one. Again, Al Jackson is set. The one-one pitch. Taken inside. Started to go and held off. It's two and one. Jackson checks the runners. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on as a high hopper down to third. Taken deep by Neal. He'll have to go across the diamond. He does and just in time. He got him to retire the side. So in the bottom half of the first inning, the Pirates got three runs on two hits. There were no errors. Two men left. So at the end of one full inning of play at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, the score is the Pirates three, the Mets one. New York Mets will be playing here again tomorrow afternoon, and they'll be here on Sunday afternoon to wind up the current homestand. The Mets will be coming home on Sunday night, and then on Monday night we'll play their first night game of the season at the Polo Grounds against the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers will be in on Monday night and Tuesday night. We checked with the Mets ticket office today, and we're told that there are plenty of good seats available for the Monday and Tuesday night games. A lot of fans perhaps thought that uh, all the good seats were gone. That isn't true at all. There are plenty of them available for Monday night and Tuesday night. As the Dodgers come in, bringing Don Drysdale and Sandy Koufax, Tommy Davis and Maury Wills, Bill Scowen and Ron Fairley, Willie Davis, Frank Howard, Leo DeRocher, Walter Alston, Duke Snyder will be playing against his former teammates for the first time. The gates will be open at 5.30 p.m. That's a half hour earlier than usual. Gates will be open at 5.30 p.m. on Monday evening for the game between the Dodgers and the Mets. Right now, we pause for station identification. 8.10 on your dial, WGY Schenectady. 9 p.m. by the General Electric Clock. Here's the first pitch to Al Moran, and it's in there for a call strike. Moran's leading off for the Mets here in the top half of the second inning. Batting number eight in the batting order. Been up 34 times, has six hits. He has batted in two runs. He has one double and one triple. That pitch comes in on one big hop. Harvey Haddock. Pitching for the Pittsburgh Pirates. again comes in on one big hop and it's two and one. Moran out of the batter's 
box at the moment. Now he comes back in. Jay Hook is scheduled to work for the Mets tomorrow afternoon. That pitch is fired low. Pops out of the glove of basket. Rolls a few feet away. Three balls and one strike. Haddock looking in to get a sign. Has it. Starts the motion for the 3-1 pitch. Fired in there. Fastball for a call strike. It's three and two. So a payoff pitch now to the Mets shortstop. Haddock has the sign. Starts the motion. Pitch is swung on and fouled off. It's out of play. And the count holds at three and two. Harvey Haddock on the mound. Has not issued a walk this year as yet. Here's a swing and a ground ball foul. Backhanded by Bob Bailey at third, so the count holds at three and two to Al Moran. This is Haddock's 12th season in the Major League. He can be used interchangeably as a starter or in relief, used uh, as a long man here tonight, coming in the first inning. Here's a payoff pitch. Swung on, foul back, out of play. The count holds at pitch swung on and belted down the line and left and it's a fair ball coming over is Ted Savage to cut it off and home Moran at first base with a sharp single to left so the Mets open up here in the top of the second with a single to left and that'll bring up pitcher Al Jackson that is the first hit for the Mets in the ball game they scored a run in the first but on four walks issued by McBean then Harvey Haddock came in to strike out Choo Choo Coleman. Pirates lead by a score of three to one, and Jackson now wants to walk down and get checked out thoroughly with Cookie Lavagetta, the coach at third, to see exactly uh, what the sign is. Jackson himself has very excellent speed, so that even in a sacrifice situation, with the ball on the ground, he is a threat to get on there because he can fly. Bob Bailey in on the edge of the grass at third. Here's the pitch. He squares to bunt and takes it for a call strike. Didn't offer. Took the pitch and it's in there. Jackson's been up seven times this year and has two hits for a batting average of 286. On one of them, he bluffed a bunt and then looped a ball right out back of short for a base hit. This time he takes it high and inside, did not square. He was not bunting on that pitch. Al Moran, the base runner at first. Here's a throw over. Clint Dunnan takes it, but Moran's back safely. Now he squares again and takes high. Two balls, one strike. As Al Jackson squared into a bunt position, Clendenin at first and Bailey at third came in at a gallop. He squares again. This time bunts the ball down the third baseline. Bailey takes it. He'll go to first base and he does in time. With Maz covering over there, if you're scoring, it goes 5-4 sacrifice. Moves Moran to second. One away. Jim Hickman coming up now. He's been up one time and he walked and later scored the only run that has been scored by the Mets tonight. Mo Plaskett out to check with Harvey Haddock. Haddock's 
with the pitch to Hickman is high. Four ball. President George Weiss of the Mets uh, held a press conference this afternoon with the writers traveling with the team. Just to sort of fill them in, bring them up to date, there was certainly nothing startling. Here's a pitch fired inside for a ball. It's 2-0. Oh. Pirates 3, the Mets 1. Here's a pitch high. There's out to three balls to Hickman. New York Mets, of course, gradually have uh, been getting themselves into the record books of this season. First, they had to get that first victory, and then they had to get the first road victory, which was achieved in Chicago, and they're trying tonight to get their first night game victory. They won none and lost three at night this season. Pitch to Hickman is high, and he walked for the second time tonight to give the Mets runners at first and second, one man out, and second baseman Ron Hunt coming up. That is the first walk issued by Harvey Haddix this season. Previously, he had pitched eight and two-thirds innings before tonight. Hunt's been up one time, and he grounded out pitcher to first. That was with Mike Bean still in the ball game. Pitch is fired high for ball one to Ron Hunt. Duke Snyder is on deck for the Mets. We're in the top half of the second inning. Tom Sturdivant is up and throwing again in the bullpen now for Danny Murtaugh's Pirates. Pitch to Hunt is swung on and has a fly ball down the right field line. Roberto Clemente is going over as far as he can go. This one's a foul ball. In the stands and out of play. Right down the right field line. Levels the count at one ball and one strike to Hunt. Rains Hickman back to first. Moran to second. Along the way, we have had one balk call in the ball game. Called on McBean in the top half of the first inning. Here's a pitch to Hunt. Swung on, fouled off to the right side and out of play. Two and two to the rookie second baseman. from Plaskett. Set runner's lead here is the pitch swung on and has a high pop going into short right. Clemente is there. Moran is tagged, but uh, he simply comes about one step off and stays right there. No advance on the fly ball to short right taken by Clemente. And that will bring up Buke Snyder. New York Mets have potential tying runs on base here in the top of the second. Snyder's been up one time and he grounded out pitcher to first. Facing left-hand pitcher Harvey Haddock. The Duke is waiting. Pitch is swung on and missed. Strike one. Frank Thomas is on deck for the Mets. with the pitch. Breaking ball swung on and fouled off. Runs the count. Two strikes to Duke Snyder. 
Duke has a batting average now of an even 200. One double, three home runs, six runs batted in. Maddox looking in. Runners lead. Pitch to Snyder. Breaking ball misses outside. It's one and two. Snyder swings the bat. Harvey Haddock working slowly, easily on the mound. One, two, pitch, swung on and missed. Strike three, he struck him out, and Snyder becomes the second strikeout victim for Haddock. In the top of the second, the Mets got no runs on one hit, no errors, and two left. And at the end of an inning and a half, the score is the Pirates three, the Mets one. And now, a word from Viceroy Cigarette. We're the Brothers Four, with a story about our friend, Mr. Frog. Right now, we find that frog in the midst of a search. For a new Beller cigarette. He tried a Viceroy cigarette. Uh-huh. I think I'm going to like it. He found they had the best taste yet. Uh-huh. The taste is right. After trying all seven leading filter brands, Mr. Frog is now a Viceroy fan. In the bottom half of the second inning, the Pirates will send up pitcher Harvey Haddock. That's left against the left-hander, Al Jackson, still in there for the Mets. Here's the wind-up in the pitch. Outside for a ball. Charlie Neal. Even with the edge of the grass at third base against the left-hand batter Haddock. Again the pitch, and it's outside for ball. 2-0. Jim Hickman in center, shaded slightly toward left on Haddock. It's in there for a call strike. 2-1. Mets got one run in the top half of the first inning, and the Pirates came back to get three in the bottom half first inning and lead now by a score of three to one. Breaking ball swung on has a chopper taken by Jackson. He guns it on over to Craneville in time for the out. So Harvey Haddock grounds out pitcher to first, one away, nobody on. And the top of the batting order, Dick Schofield coming up. He was walked. And the first thing on four pitch ball. Maintains his batting average of 306. Switch hitter, bats right. the pitch in there for a call strike to Schofield. Pittsburgh Pirates remade their infield this year as they traded Dick Stewart to the Boston Red Sox, Dick Grote to the St. Louis Cardinals, Don Hope to the Philadelphia Phillies. Slow curveball is high. It's 1-1. One, one. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Schofield. Swung on and tipped off, and the bat slipped out of his hand and went all the way down to third, where it is retrieved by Charlie Neal. Got a little piece of the ball right back into the glove of Choo Choo Coleman. One ball and two strikes to Schofield. The Pirates started the night with a record of eight victories and five losses. Only a half game behind the St. Louis Cardinals and the San Francisco Giants, tied for the top rung in the National League. Here's the pitch, just missing. High for ball. 
2-2. For many years, of course, Dick Grote was the field captain of the Pittsburgh Pirates. He has been replaced by Bill Mazeroski, the lone remaining infield veteran. Here's a swing and a ground ball to short. Moran is up with it. Plays it over to first base to Cranepool in time. And Schofield is grounded out short to first. Two men out, nobody on, and Ted Savage is coming up. Savage had a two-run homer in the first inning. Put the Pirates out in front. And he's getting an appreciative round of applause here. Time to relax with a Viceroy cigarette. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Batting average of 333. Pitch is outside for a ball. Of course, he's been up only nine times and has three hits. Low curve is high. 2 and 0. Series tonight here at Forbes Field. That pitch is in there for a call strike. Two and one. Mets played the Cincinnati Reds two night games in Cincinnati and lost both of those. And on Monday night played the Philadelphia Phillies in Philadelphia and lost that one. So the Mets are still trying to win one after dark. Two balls, one strike. To Ted Savage with two men out and nobody on base. with a 2-1 pitch fired low three balls one strike the Mets got some very excellent pitching in Chicago in that two game set Carl Willie of course turned in the finest Mets pitching performance of the season there's a pitch in there for a call strike full count now at 3-2 and two to Savage be a payoff pitch from Al Jackson to Ted Savage. On the way. Swung on and it's a fly ball to left center. Hickman is over. Thomas is over. Thomas calls and Frank puts it away to retire the side. So Al Jackson settles down to get the Pirates out in order in the bottom of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. At the end of two, the score is the Pirates three, the Mets one. Well, of course, uh, with the new baseball season underway, you'll want to get all the information you can about the new ball players and about uh, the new baseball team, the New York Mets, and the 1963 official New York Met yearbook is now available. This year's edition uh, has Mr. Met on the front cover. Inside, there are over 100 pictures. There are biographical and statistical uh, data about your favorite Met players in addition. There are stories about Casey Stengel, the coaches, about Shea Stadium, the Steady Arama scoreboard, lots of highlights about last season, uh, information about the Met Farm Clubs, about the men behind the scenes. There's a complete page of players' autographs. To obtain your copy of the 1963 yearbook, send 50 cents for each copy to Met Yearbook, Polo Grounds, New York, 39, New York. Also, the Met Yearbook may be obtained at the Met Ticket Office at Pennsylvania Station. And uh, the Met ticket office at Grand Central Station as well. We'll be going now to the top half of the third inning. And coming in here, a fellow who spent a lot of great years here at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. And when he was giving you the rundown before the ball game, we were interested to see him look way down in the corner to see the 360 sign because he made a living out of hitting balls over that fence and had to look to see how far it was. Coming in here now is Ralph Kiner. Okay, Lindsay, you know, it looks even further now. When I first came in here, I said, oh, no, it can't be that far away. But they built a nice little thing called Greenberg Gardens out there, and that helped a little bit. 
drop the distance down to 335. Here's the first pitch to Frank Thomas, who has done well in this park, and is fouled back on the screen for strike one. Frank started his career here in center field in Forbes Field after some fine years in the Pittsburgh Pirate organization. One time, Frank hit 35 home runs here. Here's the one strike pitch by Harvey Haddix, a curveball at top side for ball one. Haddix came in the game in place of Al McBean, the starting pitcher. Since he has been in, he has given up only one base hit. Now the pitch back to Thomas, hit sharply on the ground down to Schofield. Schofield comes up. He underhands the first in time. Dick Schofield at shortstop played that ball a little shaky. He pulled up off of it, got it in the very end of his glove, and did make the play to first base. This infield here at Forbes Field is a tough infield. It's very, very fast, very hard. So one out now as Haddix works here in the top of the third inning, and the batter coming up is Ed Crane Bull. Thomas walked his first time up, so he is now 0 for 1. Here is Ed Crane Bull, who also walked. Left hand batting first baseman, and he tries to check a swing. It'll cost him a strike. He went too far. Haddix real tough on a left hander. He has a big curveball. Now the left-hander back to the plate, and he gets another strike on a curveball, strike two. Again, Grain Pool trying to hold up, but going too far. He's been pulled twice in a row now. Harvey Haddix looking for the sign from his catcher. Mo Plackett, the catcher behind home plate. There's a curve hit down to the third base side. Off by the third baseman on down the line. A base hit for Cranepool. He's going to try for two. He'll make it standing up. Eddie Cranepool just reached out on that curveball and punched it right by the third baseman. The ball going on down the line, coming over in left field to field the ball, Ted Savage. Savage fell down in trying to throw the ball to second base. He couldn't get it away, but he had no chance anyway. So Cranepool, a good base hit off a tough left-hander. Now the Mets have... The tie run at the plate in the form of Charlie Neal. One out here in the top of the third. Charlie walked and forced in a run his first time up. He has driven in the only run of the game for the Mets. And his first pitch is fouled away, strike one. The score, three to one in favor of the Pittsburgh Pirates. They scored their three runs in the first inning. Just can't get over the way Cranepool battles you up at that plate. For 18 years of age, he really acts like a veteran player. He's now batting 323. Here's a high fastball to Neal. Pitch out of the strike zone. One ball and one strike. Harvey Haddock's a long look at the signs. Plask gets the catcher. Now the pitch back to the plate. It's high, a fastball. Two balls and one strike. First inning of this game took 50 minutes to play. The Mets set seven men up. The Pittsburgh Pirates sent up eight. Mets picked up four walks in there, and he no hits. Pirates had only two hits. One of them a two-run home run by Ted Savage. They, in turn, received three walks in their half of the inning. There's a swing and a miss by Charlie Neal. Two balls and two strikes now. Al McBean, the starting pitcher, walked four men. He was charged with one run. He gave up no hits. Prior to this game, he had walked only two men in 11 and one-third innings. Now it's Harvey Haddix back to Charlie Neal. Curveball hit sharply on the ground to the shortstop. Schofield up with it. He chases Cranepool back to second base and makes the play to first in time. Out number two. So Schofield has two assists in the inning, and the batter will now be Clarence Coleman. Coleman struck out with the bases loaded his first time up in the first inning. That was the first man that Harvey Haddix pitched to. Harvey coming in in a real jam, getting a very big strikeout. Coleman batting from the left-hand side. And the first pitch, a ball to Chuchu. The on-deck batter, Al Moran, he has one of the hits in the ball game. The only one, in fact, by the New York Mets. 
Outside the one here by Cranepole. There's a smash picked up on the short hop by the first baseman. He throws the first base just in time. Don Clendenin at first base took that line shot on the short hop. He juggled the ball as he moved to the second base side. Then he made a fine throw to Harvey Haddix coming on over. And Haddix completed the play. And now we have the side out in the inning for the Mets. No runs on one hit. Nowhere is one man left. And the score at the end of two and one half innings to play. The Pittsburgh Pirates three, the New York Mets one. Say, if you like music, I think you'll love this. For the first bright taste of Rheingold, here's what good food deserves. It goes with dips, potato chips, and even with hors d'oeuvres. Oh, it's sure to please when served with cheese, its flavor is brisk and bright. A sparkling glass of Rheingold beer, it livens up each bite. Alone, it's fine, or when you dine, and next to food, it's place. A glorious glass of Rheingold, it's beer and beer should taste. Rheingold Extra Dry is brewed of the choicest ingredients, the long, slow, costlier way for flavor that's brisk and bright and clean, clear through. It's beer as beer should taste. Dry tells you why. My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. Think of Rheingold whenever you buy beer. It's not bitter, not sweet. It's the dry flavor treat. Won't you try Extra Dry Rheingold beer? Moving now to the bottom half of the third inning, the Pirates out in front, three to one. If you're scoring, the umpire called Chuchu Coleman out on the play at first base as a result of Clendenin at first base catching the ball on the fly. Clendenin didn't know he did. He made the play to Harvey Headaches anyway. So if you're keeping a regular book, it'll go as a lined out out to the first baseman. Here's the first pitch now as Al Jackson works here in the bottom half of the third. It's low for ball one. Leading off here for the Pittsburgh Pirates, Roberto Comeni. It'll be Don Clendenin after Comeni and then Bill Mazeroski. Jackson now with his next pitch. It's outside. Two balls and no strikes. Comeni was out on the ground ball back to the pitcher's mound his first time up. He has 11 hits and 43 trips to the plate. He's batting 256. Left-hander Al Jackson, 27 years of age, working on the mound for the Mets. He's a former Pittsburgh Pirate. Now he misses again for ball three. Al's control has been off so far in this game. He has given up three rocks while giving up two base hits. One of the hits, a two-run home run by Ted Savage. Pirates scored three runs in their half of the first inning. Now the 3-0 pitch, a breaking pitch on the outside corner for strike one. Kameni was on his way to first base. So he comes back. The count now, three balls and one strike. Jackson had a record of one win and no losses for the Pirates in his major league career for them. Now the 3-1 pitch. Slider hit down the right field line out of play. So that fills it out at 3-2. and two. Roberto Comeni leading off for the Pittsburgh Pirates here in the bottom half of the third. Jackson now taking the sign from Choo Choo Coleman. And many deep in the box. And now the 3 2 pitch. Foul away, and the count will stay at three balls and two strikes. Only one other game underway in the National League right now. Cincinnati playing at Houston. The Colts lead the Reds by a score of 1 0 after two innings. Jim Maloney going for Cincinnati against Bruce. One game completed in the National League. Philadelphia Phillies defeated Chicago 5-2. My happy the winning pitcher. Now Jackson back again at 3-2. So the count holds as Kameni fouls it away. Milwaukee is scheduled at San Francisco. St. Louis at Los Angeles in the other two games in the National League. The American League. It's all tied up at the end of nine innings. Washington coming back to tie it up with one run in the bottom half of the ninth inning. As they move to the tenth, the score is 10-10. That's the first game of two. There's a swing and a miss on the 3-2 pitch by Al Jackson. And Kameni goes out for the first strikeout victim. And now coming up with one out will be Don Clendenin.
in other games in the American League. The Angels lead Baltimore 3-1 to one on the strength of two home runs by Wagner. Gentile has scored the only run for the Baltimore Orioles on a home run. First pitch to Clendenin is outside. A fastball for ball one. McBride pitching for the Angels against Robin Roberts. And the Minnesota Twins lead Detroit 2-1 to one through five and a half. Roland going for Minnesota. He's up from Class B ball, and Don Mossy's going for Detroit. Here's a swing and a foul ball. They count one ball and one strike. Don Clendon in the batter. He walked his first time up. Moved to second base on a walk by Bill Mazarowski. Stole third and scored when Mo Plaskett singled to center field. Pittsburgh Pirates lead 3-1 to one here in the bottom half of the third one man out. Now Jackson back, and there's a line shot right through the middle in the center field of base hit. Clendenin rounds first. Now he's going to try for second. Here comes the throw. It's off to the left side. The slide is tagged on in time. Two base hits for Clendenin on some fine base running. Jim Hickman had to move over to his left. He fielded the ball to the right field side of center field. He had to turn to make his throw. The throw came in. It was on the shortstop side of second base. Al Moran taking the throw. Couldn't make the tag in time. So Clinton and a big fellow, six foot four, using real good speed to real advantage here against the Mets. That gives the Pirates a runner at second base with one out. The batter now, Bill Mazarowski. That is only the third hit of the game off of Al Jackson, but he has thrown in three walks. Pirates lead, lead three to one. Mazarowski batting for the second time. He walked his first time up. Jackson moving off the pitching rubber. As time is called. Now Jackson on top. And his wheel around to second base chases Trent Denon back. No one covering. Of course, Jackson stepping off the pitching rubber to make the turnaround. That way he doesn't have to throw unless he desires to. Now time called to allow Bill Mazarowski to dig in in the batter's box. Jackson sets. Clendenin with a short lead at second base. And the first pitch is a curve low for ball one. One ball count. One man out. Bottom half of the third. Left-hander Al Jackson with a record against the Pirates of no wins and two losses. The only two pitchers to win ball games against Pittsburgh. Jay Hook, who's going tomorrow. Here's a foul ball. While we have time, we'll pause for station identification. This is the voice of the Mets in the great Northeast, WGY Schenectady. 25 minutes until 10. Ralph Kiner along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. The other pitcher to win a ball game against Pittsburgh, the left-handed Bob Miller. He's no longer with the club. Now a play on a second base. A fine play by Hunt to keep the ball from going on through to center field. Clendon and back safely. The throw was on the shortstop side at second base, and Hunt had to go over and make a real good play to keep the throw from going through. Ball, one strike count. Jackson working to Bill Mazarowski. Now Jackson set. And the pitch out is outside. The throw to second base is off to the left side, not in time. Juju Coleman putting on a pitch out. The count moving to two balls and one strike. Now Casey Stengel is coming out to talk to Al Jackson. So manager Casey Stengel evidently coming out to tell Jackson to worry a little bit more about Bill Mazarowski, although there's a real reason for the fact that Jackson has been working on Clendenin. He stole 16 bases last year for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He led the club in that department. 
And already here tonight, he has one stolen base. Warming up in the bullpen for the Mets is Tracy Stoddard. He was up before. Pirates scored three runs in the first inning off Al Jackson and Stoddard was up going there. Now Casey gets a hand as he goes back to the dugout, which is something you'll ever see on other managers in baseball. Casey getting a hand everywhere he goes. Bill Mazarowski, the batter, and now Chuchu Coleman stands up. He mentions that first base is open. 2-1 count with one out. The on-deck batter is Mo Plaska, the right-hand batter. Now the pitch to the plate. Inside for ball three. Three balls and one strike. Mets trying to... Put on another play at second base. Ron Hunt moving him back at second, but Glenn Denon getting back to the bag to stop any more action. Now Glenn Denon with a fairly good lead at second. Jackson looking for the sign. 3-1 count, one out. Bottom half of the third inning. Now Jackson stepping off the pitching rubber as Glenn Denon dances around at second base. Nine called, and Bill Mazarowski steps out of the batter's box. Here's Jackson on top again, and here's his pitch. It's low, ball four. Joel Mazurowski walks. The Pirates now have runners at first and second. That is the fourth walk issued by Jackson in the game, and now time is called as Charlie Neal comes to the mound to talk to Al Jackson. Also going out is Choo Choo Coleman. Plaskett singled to center field. He bounced the ball right through the middle his first time up to drive in the third run of the game for the Pirates. The first two came in a home run by Ted Savage. He has two hits and ten times up so far this year. Now Jackson with his first pitch to the right-hand batter. A high curve that slips out of his hands. It's outside for ball one. Curve slipping out of Jackson's left hand. One ball and no strike. Plaskett hit a curveball his last time up. And now the pitch back, a curveball popped up. Infield fly called by the first base umpire, Lee Wire. And making the play to complete the play. Ed Grainpool holding at second base, Don Clendenin at first base, Bill Mazarowski. And now with two out, the batter will be the center fielder, Bill Verdon. Bill fought out the left field his first time up. He's batting 286. 14 hits and 49 trips to the plate. Once again, Glenn Denon moving around at second. Here's the first pitch. It's a curveball over. That time, Glenn Denon was caught as the pitch was made, only about two feet from second base. He's been dancing around at second base, a la, a la, uh, a la Jackie Robinson. Al Moran, the shortstop, in behind him fairly close. Left-hand batter with good speed batting. Now the one strike pitch. Curve again. This one is top foul down in the dirt by home plate. Strike two. So Jackson out in front. 0-2 to Bill Verdon. Two men out. Bottom half of the third. The Pirates lead 3-1. to one. Jackson set. And he comes back high for ball one. A fastball up too high. One ball and two strikes. Bill Burton was acquired from the St. Louis Cardinals for Bobby Del Greco, who had started his career right here in Forbes Field right out of high school.
Del Greco being involved in a big ball game in Washington. His three run home run tied up the ball game. Put the men out in front. Here's a swing and a miss for a strike, and that retires the side. So Al Jackson in trouble in the third inning works his way out with the strikeout, his second of the game. And in the inning for the Pirates, no runs on one hit, no errors, one walk, two men left. And the score at the end of three. The Pirates three, the New York Mets one. Well, in the National League, the San Francisco Giants are tied for first place with the St. Louis Cardinals, and they'll be coming in for their first big series in the Polo Grounds on May the 3rd. And the big night, May 3rd, being more or less stage for a fellow who had some tremendous years in the Polo Grounds, Willie Mays. After Willie Mays' night on May the 3rd, the Giants will play a Saturday Ladies' Day game, and then on May 5th, a big doubleheader, Game time for that one starting at 2 o'clock. On the Willie Mays night, the committee is headed by none other than Toots Shore. He's the chairman. Along with Toots, there'll be Jackie Gleason, Kyle Roth, Frank Gifford, Jack Lascouli. And also, a special committee from some of the ex-teammates of Willie. Saul Evars, Bobby Thompson, Sid Gordon, Jim Hearn, Bonnie Irwin. So, a lot of action coming your way when the Mets return home. And they'll be playing the Dodgers, Houston, and then the San Francisco Giants starting on May 3rd. Right here, the action starting again. It's the top of the fourth inning. The Pirates lead by a score of 3-1, to one, and Al Moran leads off for the New York Mets. Moran has one of the two hits in the game for the Mets, and he looks outside for ball one. Harvey Haddix, who came in the game with two men out in the first inning, is working on the mound for Pittsburgh. Now they're getting back to work, and there's a smash in the left field, a base hit. Moran up with his second base hit of the game. He holds it first base as the throw comes in. And coming out to bat in the pitcher's position, to bat for himself, Al Jackson. That is the third hit given up by Haddix in the game. And now the Mets have the time run at the plate as Al Jackson comes up. Al is a good hitting pitcher. He bunted his first time up. Sacrifice bunt that moved Al Moran on down to second base. So officially, he has yet to be at bat. In this game, he has two for seven on the year. And there's a balk call, and that'll move Al Moran down. That balk was called by Jock O'Connell first, the third base umpire. I should check that and say Ed Bargo, the third base umpire. So two balks in the game, in spite of the fact that the president of the National League has declared that. The umpires relax their attention of the one-second stop. Warren Giles in a press conference indicating that all the pitchers have to do from today on is come to a momentary pause. Over 70 bucks called in the National League so far this year. Now the first pitch to Al Jackson. It's a called strike for strike one. Al Moran now at second base. And the pitch back to Jackson. Hit down the ground to second base. Moving to third on the play is Al Moran. And Jackson is out as Mazeroski completes the throw. So Jackson does his job. He pulls the ball to the right side. That puts Moran at third with one out. And it brings up Jim Hickman. Jim has walked twice. And he has scored the only run of the game. For the New York Mets, they trail by a score of 3-1. to one. Jim represents the time run of the game. The infield's being played back. And the first pitch to Moran is a curveball that's inside for ball one. Jim, the leading batter for the New York Mets this year. He's batting 326. He also leads the club and runs batted in with 12. He's tied for the club, leading home runs with three. And Haddix comes back with a fastball. It's fouled out of play, strike one. One ball and one strike. to Moran is low, a curveball, two balls and one strike. (laughs) 
Harvey Haddock's into the swing. And back to the plate. And there's a curve. Moran takes just too low. Three balls and one strike. Moran at third base. Jim Hickman the batter. It's a 3-1 count. Now Haddock's back again. There's a curveball hit foul. So on 3-1, Haddock comes in with a breaking pitch, and Jim Hickman fouls it off. That fills it out at three balls and two strikes. Mets need two to tie. They have a big runner at third base, Al Moran there. It's the top of the fourth inning. It's all even at three apiece. And now Haddock's again back to the plate. There's a curveball outside for ball four. That is the third time that Jim Hickman has walked in this game. That is the fifth walk issued by the Pittsburgh Pirate pitchers, the second by Harvey Haddix. Now the Mets have the time run at first base. And the batter coming on is Ron Hunt. And now time is called as the catcher. Bo Plaskett goes out to talk to Harvey Haddix. Tom Sturdivan, a right-hander, throwing in the bullpen now for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's been up before. Also, along with Sturdivan, Tom Sisk. Time is in now, and here's the first pitch to Ron Hunt. It's outside for ball run. Hunt shortened up as though to push the ball on down to second base on a safety squeeze play. Runners at first and third. And then he took the pitch outside for ball one. Now the next pitch. It's over for strike one. One ball and one strike. Joe Gibbon, a left-hander, now throwing for the Pittsburgh Pirates, along with Tom Sturdivan, a right-hander. Here's a bunt attempt. It's taken, though, for ball two. This time again, Ron Hunt on the safety squeeze situation, pulling off just in time. Two balls and one strike. Curveball just below the knees. Both times, Hunt has been trying to, in his maneuvers, to start the bunt out towards second base, but both times, he has pulled off for ball two. Ball one, then ball two. First baseman, Clem Denon, has been charging, looking for the possible bunt. At third base, Bailey has been fairly deep there. Here's the pitch back to the plate. It's low again, a curveball. Three balls and one strike. So Harvey Haddix is a pitch away from holding up the bases. There's one out. Mets batting here in the top of the fourth inning. They need two to tie. They have runners at first and third. Now the left-hander back to the plate. There's a pitch. It's high for ball four. Jim Hickman was running on the pitch. But Hunt, with a good eye, took the pitch high to load up the bases. So now the Mets have Duke Snyder coming up. They have the time run at second base. The go-ahead run at first base. And the Duke... So far in the game, looking for his first hit. Mets have seven walks in the game. They have three base hits. And the first pitch to Snyder is a curveball. Swung on a miss, strike one. Duke struck out swinging his last time up on a curveball. That time he was batting with... Runners at first and second base. His first time up, he bounced back to the mound. He was batting that time against right-hander Al McBean, who was the starting pitcher for the Pirates. Now the curve back. Again, a swing and a miss for strike two. This time, Snyder tried to stay with the curveball and hit it to left field. So Haddix, with the bases loaded now, has two strikes on Duke Snyder. The on-deck batter's Frank Thomas. Here's the windup and the two-strike pitch. Curveball pulled foul out of play. 
Ball going on by in the right field by first base coach Dolly Hemus. Now being picked up by Rod Keneal in the bullpen for the Mets. So the count stays at 0-2. On at third base, Al Moran. At second base, Jim Hickman. At first base, Ron Hunt. Mets with the bases loaded. One man out. Infield playing back for the possible double play. Here's the windup and the two-strike pitch again. Slider that's up too high for ball one. One ball and two strikes. Harvey Haddix came in this game in the first inning with two men out. He got Chuchu Coleman on a strikeout to stop the Met rally at one run. Since then, he has given up three hits. He's working here in the fourth inning with one man down. And now the pitch back to Snyder. Curveball hits the right field. This will score at least the run. Kamati is way back there. Tagged up at third is Moran. He'll score. Going to third base after the catch is Jim Hickman. So the Mets now have scored their second run of the ball game as Duke Snyder hung in there and drove a long fly about 370 feet to right field. And then he had to go back in the warning track to make the catch. And now the Mets have the time run at third base. Holding at first base after the catch was Ron Hunt and the batter is Frank Thomas. So the Duke gets his seventh run batted into the year. Now Frank Thomas comes up. He is 0 for 1. He also has walked. His one at bat coming when he bounced hard to the shortstop, Dick Schofield. And the first pitch to Thomas is on the outside corner at the knees for strike one. drove in all three runs in the Met victory yesterday against the Cubs. He was featured in the papers here in Pittsburgh, his hometown. There's a high pop-up on the first base side. Clendenin is coming over by the box seat. He is there and he makes the catch. That retires the side. In the inning, though, the Mets score one run. They had one hit. There were two walks. Two men were left on and the score at the end of three and one half innings of play. The Pittsburgh Pirates three, the New York Mets Say, hey fans, you know there are many ways to brew beer. Rheingold, well, Rheingold takes the long, slow, costly way, the extra dry way. And that explains why there's such a wonderful difference in the taste of Rheingold. Yes, dry tells you why. Tells you why Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. Brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Costly ingredients are one thing, and Rheingold has them, but it takes more. It takes the skill of 126 years of brewing experience. The extra dry skill, it is Rhine Gold's alone. And you can measure the difference. Yes, measure the difference that dry makes in taste. Rhine Gold has the happiest taste in beer today. No other beer can quite match it. So it's no wonder that millions say, my beer is Rhine Gold, the dry beer. But wouldn't you rather discover that difference yourself? Enjoy the extra refreshment that comes with Rhine Gold extra dry beer. Open up or order a fine cold Rhine Gold right now. Enjoy a glass right along with the game. It's the bottom half of the fourth inning. The score is three to two in favor of the Pirates, and their first man up looks low for ball one. It's Bob Bailey. Big bonus player signed out of Woodrow Wilson High School in Long Beach, California. The same school that Bob Lemon went to. Bailey, a right-hand batter, playing third base, playing in his first starting Major League season. Now Al Jackson back with a curve. It's a called strike, breaking over about letter high. One ball and one strike. Bailey mounts to third base his first time up against Al Jackson. Al has given up only three hits in the game so far. Now the left-hander comes back with a slider. It's bounced slowly down to first base. Charlie Neal, third base. Charlie Neal comes up with the ball, throws the first base in time for out number one. After a long wait to start his half of the first inning, Al Jackson came in the game and walked his first man, Dick Schofield. Then he gave up a home run to Ted Savage to give the Pirates the lead at 2-1. to one. 
After getting Kameni on the ground ball, Jackson walked Clendenin, Bill Mazurowski. And then Mo Plaska came through with a base hit to center field for the third run of the inning. And that's the way it has stood as far as the Pittsburgh Pirates have been concerned in this game. One man out here in the bottom half of the fourth, and the batter is Harvey Haddix. And he swings and fouls the first pitch out of play for strike one. Since the first inning, Al has given up only one hit. That was a double to Don Clendenin. Now Jackson comes back to work, and here's his pitch to Haddix. Curveball high, one ball and one strike. Jackson has not been sharp on control in this game. He has walked a total of four batters, and he has been consistently behind. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Haddix. The bouncy ball hit down to second. Hunt comes up with it, goes to first in time, out number two. You know, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. How about you? Just about enough time to open up or order up a Rheingold Extra Dry before Nick Schofield comes to bat. Jackson's had a long time between starts. He worked against the Milwaukee Braves in his last start in the Polo Grounds. That was on last Saturday, so that might account for the fact that he has been just a little bit wild today. He did work in relief against Philadelphia. Here's the first pitch to Dick Schofield. It's inside for ball one. Schofield had a great finish for the Pittsburgh Pirates in their stretch drive to win the National League pennant in 1960. He replaced Dick Grove, who was out with a broken arm, and hit 368 in 19 games. Now he bounces one down through the middle. It's not down by Al Moran. And then kicked on out of the center field. But Moran chases the ball down, picks it up, throws it in quickly, and holds the shortstop, Dick Schofield, to a single. Moran went over behind second base, got his glove on the ball to knock it down. But then in trying to regain his balance, he kicked the ball on out into shallow center field about 40 feet away. So Schofield has his first hit. He is now one for two. He has scored one run, and with two out, Savage, who has a two-run home run to his credit. Home run by Savage, his first home run in a Pittsburgh Pirate uniform. Pirates now lead the Mets in base hits four to three. They also lead in runs by three to two. Bottom half of the fourth inning, two men out. Savage bats on the right hand side. He has good power. He started his career with the Philadelphia Phillies. And he swings, a big swing. Foul tips the ball, it's held on to by Coleman, strike one. Savage came over to Pittsburgh in a trade that sent Don Holt to the Phillies. We'll never forget one home run he hit against the Mets. That was a drive into the lower center field bleachers in Philadelphia. Carried about 440 feet away, just about on the line. Now the one strike pitch by Jackson. It's high, over the top of his head, ball one. Savage was the most valuable player in the International League in 1961. He has real good speed. The Pirates with a good running ball club. Two men out, and the 1-1 pitch by Jackson. Hit hard on the ground to the shortstop Moran. He digs it out, goes to the second baseman for the force play at second to retire the side. In the inning for the Pittsburgh Pirates, no runs on one hit, no errors, one man left, and the score at the end of four innings of play, the Pirates three, the New York Mets two. Now, while we wait to check the scores, we'll pause for station identification. This is the voice of the Mets in the Northeast, WGY Schenectady, one minute past ten. Rob Kiner along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The score of 3-2 to two in favor of the Pirates. And now coming on here to bring you up to date and keep you in the play-by-play -play is Lindsey Nelson. Okay, Ralph Kiner, and right now let's check on scores of other games. In the National League this afternoon, the Phillies beat the Cubs 5-2, Mahaffey beat Hobby. 
And tonight at the end of four and a half, the Houston Colts 45s lead the Cincinnati Reds one to nothing. Maloney against Bruce. Milwaukee against the Giants in San Francisco. A latest start. The Cards are at Los Angeles against the Dodgers in the latest start. In that game in Washington, they're going to the 13th inning. Still tied 10-10. Kansas City and the Washington Senators. That's the first of two. And Baltimore going to the bottom of the eighth. It is the Los Angeles Angels three and the Orioles one. And we'll check more on that in a moment because right now play is continuing here with Ed Crane's who at the plate. Top half of the fifth inning. Harvey Haddock for the wind-up and a pitch swung on. And a comeback of the Haddock. Straightens up, fires on over the first in time to Clint Dunnan. There is one away. Crane for grounding out. Ed had a double in the top half of the third inning. Charlie Neal coming up. He walked with the bases loaded to drive in a run in the first inning. And he grounded out short the first and the third. This is a 3-2 to two ball game. The Pirates leading the Mets by a scant one-run margin. Harvey Haddix with a wind-up and the pitch to Charlie Neal. It's in there for a call strike. In Detroit, going to the bottom of the seventh, it is the Minnesota Twins 2 and the Detroit Tigers 2. We try to keep you posted on scores of other games throughout the evening. Here's a pitch that's low. One and one. Charlie Neal waits for the pitch. Slow curveball, and it hits uh, deep to left center. Moving back there is Bill Verdon, and he's waiting and makes the catch for the out. Two men out, nobody on. That'll bring up catcher Choo Choo Coleman, a left-hand batter. New York Yankees and the New York Mets will be meeting at Yankee Stadium on Monday night, June 3rd, in the Mayor's Trophy game for the benefit of Sandlot Baseball in New York. Choo-choo's been up twice, struck out swinging and lined out to Clendenin at first. Swings and sends one foul down into the right field corner into the upper deck down there. So it is strike one to Choo Choo Coleman. New York Mets have uh, left men stranded every inning up to now. They left three on base in the first, two in the second, one in the third, and two in the fourth. As the Pirates continue to lead them by one run. Addicts with the pitch, a little tight, Choo Choo. It's one and one. Al Moran is on deck for the Mets. Flashy fielding short stops two for two tonight. Haddock with the windup and the 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and missed. Choo Choo took a ripple. It's one and two with two men out and nobody on base. Haddock looking in for a sign. Mo Plaskett. And now Choo Choo backs out of the batter's box to haul play. We've had two box calls here tonight. One call on Al McBean and one on Harvey Haddock. Here's the 1-2 pitch to Coleman. Swung on, and it's a blue bat towards second, and it's taken there by Mazeroski. But the outfit retires the side. As Harvey Haddock gets the Mets out in order, this is the first time they've gone down in order tonight. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. And at the end of four and a half innings of play, the score is Howard's three, the Mets two. On tap now, something bright and sprightly. <laughs> Dry is brewed the long, slow, costlier way for flavor that's brisk, bright, and clean, clear through. Its beer is beer should taste. Dry tells you why. My beer is Rhine Gold, the dry beer. Think of Rhine Gold whenever you buy beer. It's not bitter, it's not sweet. It's a dry flavor treat. Won't you try extra dry? Rhine Gold beer. Going to the bottom half of the fifth inning, and Roberto Clemente is up to lead off for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He grounded out pitch at the first in the first inning, and he struck out swinging in the third. 
They think Al Jackson, who started, he's been in there all the way for the Mets. He got off to a rocky start when the Pirates picked up three runs on two hits and three walks in the first inning. But he has since settled down into the windup and the pitch to Clemente, a breaking ball, swung on and missed. Clemente swinging from the heels and all the way around. Strike one. The Mets and the Pirates at Forbes Field. Jackson works. Breaking ball is in there for a call, strike two. Jackson now taking a little time out there on the mound. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. And the two strike pitch. Swung on and lined to second. Short hops out there by Hunt, and he fires on over to Crane Pool in time. Ball was on the button, but short hop by Ron Hutt and played over to Crane Pool in time. One away, and that'll bring up Don Clendenin. Here's a fellow that moved in there last year, and by his performance, simply took over and made a position for himself, so much so that Dick Stewart was traded to the Boston Red Sox. Clendenin walked in the first inning here. Moved to second when Mazeroski walked, and then he stole third, and he doubled in the third inning. Here's a pitch low for a ball. Clint Dennis now batting 298. The official paid here tonight, 10531 This is the opening game of a three-game set. Breaking ball, let it in there for a call strike to Clint Dennis. It's 1-1. You'll recall that Pittsburgh Pirates had quite a time over the years settling on that first base position. They uh, went through the mill there. They had Dale Long and they had D. Fundy. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Inside for a ball. 2-1. And, and they had Ted Glazowski and Rocky Nelson and Dick Stewart. And now Don Clendenin is the man who's in there day after day. Swings a big bat. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Swung on. It's a high-hopping ground ball to short. Taken by Moran. Guns it on over to Crane Pool in time. Two away. Nobody on. And that will bring up the field captain of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Bill Mazeroski. He's been up twice, and he walked both times. He's a right-hand batter. Maz is batting 273. Breaking ball is inside. Ball one. Mazeroski is the field captain now. That's number five in the batting order. The veteran of uh, that infield setup. Here's the pitch in there for a call strike. One one. And of course it used to be for so long just the other way around. Groat and Hoke and whoever they had at first, he was always the kid of the infield. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on as a ground ball foul down to third, taken by Charlie Neal, back of the bag. Runs the count to one ball and two strikes to Bill Mazeroski. With Mo Plaskett on deck. Probable pitcher for Pittsburgh tomorrow is Don Schwal. Obtained to the Pirates from the Boston Red Sox. Fastball misses outside, and it's two and two. The score here, the Pirates three, the Mets two. And the bottom of the seventh with two men out and nobody on base. Jackson starts the motion for the two-two pitch. Breaking ball swung on and top. Down toward third, it's a foul ball. Neal takes it in foul territory. Running it out. Mass is almost to the bag at first before he stops and comes back now. Count to him will hold at two balls and two strikes. Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, as we've indicated, and as you baseball fans know, made some drastic moves during the offseason. More drastic moves than usually are made by a major league ball club when they traded away three of the four set infielders 
Here's a pitch swung on and fouled off. It's 2-2. They showed a great deal of confidence in the young men coming up. And so far, the Pittsburgh Pirate team has shown every indication of uh, justifying that confidence. Since they're off to a fine start in this season. Pirates, of course, won the pennant and the world's championship in 1960. What an occasion that was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Swung on and foul back. Count holds at 2-2. Two and two. Mass standing right in there. Little Al Jackson getting a sign. The 2-2 pitch is on the way. Swung on, belts it hard to right. Duke Snyder lining it up and makes the catch for the out. A line drive to right. Taken by Snyder as Maz is out, and Jackson gets the Pittsburgh Pirates out in order. In the bottom of the fifth, no runs, no hits, no errors, none left. And at the end of five, the score is the Pirates three, the Mets two. Well, what's your idea of a wonderful day? An excursion into the country? A day on the sound? trip to a lake, maybe that long journey into the backyard with your portable radio. Well, no matter which, any day becomes a little bit more wonderful when you have refreshing Rheingold beer on hand. Yes, sir, Rheingold, something special when it comes to beer. And dry tells you why. Rheingold's way of brewing is long, slow, and costly, but you can measure the difference in taste. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste, brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Isn't that the way you want your beer to be? Well, sure it is. So why don't you make Rheingold your beer? Join the millions who say, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. Find out for yourself why Rheingold is New York's largest selling beer. Have a glass right now, along with the game. The New York Mets trailing by one run will be coming up in the top half of the sixth inning. Shortstop Al Moran to lead off. He has been up twice and he's had two singles. He has scored one run. Harvey Haddock is the pitcher. He came in with two men out in the first inning. Al McBean was the starter. That pitch is on the way for a ball. Haddock, of course, is the pitcher of record. Since the Pirates came on to take the lead in the bottom half of the first inning. Again, the pitch to the right-hand batter. It's in there for a call, strike one. One and one to Al Moran. Haddock starts the motion. Pitch is swung on, and it's a fly ball deep to left. But back there is Ted Savage. He waits, and he takes it to the out. And drops the ball. And now Moran goes all the way to second class in safely at the two-base era. As Savage moved in easily to take it, he simply muffed it and dropped the ball at his feet. And Moran rounded first and went on to second. And is there with the two-base error on Ted Savage. He represents potential tying run at second. And now Al Jackson is getting explicit instructions from Casey Single on the top step of the dugout before he comes up to the plate. So Al Moran has two base hits, and now on with a two base error is uh, at second base. Jackson standing outside the batter's box as Moran gets rid of the hard hat, flings the helmet off, Cookie Lava Jetta retrieves it, and Moran. Is standing on the bag at second base. Jackson, of course, would like to get Moran over to third, whether he'd score him on a fly ball to the outfield or any of a number of other ways. He squares the butt, butts at the ball and misses. It's strike one. Clendenin charging at first, Bob Bailey charging at third. New York Mets. Trying to move Moran over to third base as he represents potential tying run. The Pirates lead three to two. Harvey Haddock looking in to Mo Plaskett for a sign. As it now up and into the stretch. Clendenin and Bailey are charging. 
Jackson squares to butt. Butts and fouls it off. It's strike two. So twice now. Mets have tried to butt Morant in second to third. And the count is two strikes. Again, the pitch. Low and away for a ball. Jackson started the swing held up, and it's one and two. Al Moran leading off the bag at second. Jim Hickman is on deck for the Mets. The pitch to Jackson. He is fired in there for a call strike three. Caught him looking. So there's one away. That's strikeout number three for Harvey Haddock. And it'll bring up Jim Hickman. Moran holding it second. Hickman has been up three times tonight, and he has walked all three times. His batting average for the season, 326. Three home runs, 12 runs batted in. Harvey Addis looking in for his sign, has it now. The pitch to Jim Hickman, the breaking ball low, blocked by Plaskett, keeps it out in front of him, no advance by Moran at second base. Ball one to Hickman. Pittsburgh three, New York two. Mets with the top of the batting order up right here. Hickman batting in the leadoff spot. In case he singles batting order. Here's a pitch that's low for ball. Two and order, Hickman. The kitten out there on the mound, Harvey Haddock. Getting settled. Comes set and the pitch. Jim Hickman swung on a little number back to the mound. It's a foul ball off the ankle of Hickman. He dropped the bat and started for first, uh, hobbling around there on the ankle. So it's a foul ball. This is the longest that Harvey Haddock has uh, pitched this season. Came on with two men out in the first inning, and we're now in the top half of the sixth. Manager Danny Murtaugh plans to use Haddock in relief and as a spot starter in that role uh, against the club against whom he's been most successful through the years the Phillies and the Giants and the Cards so there is double barrel action in the bullpen right now for the Pittsburgh Pirates and it is likely that Danny won't stay with the Haddocks too long here's a check swing foul ball if he gets in the, any appreciable trouble or it is Sturdivant and Gibbon throwing in the bullpen now. A count of two balls and two strikes to Jim Hickman with one man out and Moran at second. Harvey Haddock checks his runner. The 2-2 pitch to Hickman. Swung on and full foul on the ground out of play. I'm back at third. Umpire Ed Vargo is retrieving the ball. So the count holds to Jim Hickman. Two balls, two strikes. Ron Hunt is on deck. Hickman waits for the 2-2 offering. Breaking ball, swung on, and tipped back into the glove of Plaskett. He struck him out. Went for the breaking ball, got a little piece of it. That's strikeout number four for Harvey Haddock. So as far as the New York Mets are concerned right here, it's up to Ron Hunt. The 22-year-old second baseman grounded out. Pitcher to first, fly to right, and walked. Moran opened up with a fly ball that was dropped by Ted Savage in left field for a two-base error. Jackson struck out, Hickman struck out. Haddock with the pitch. In there for a call strike to Ron Hunt. Hunt 
takes a moment with a handful of dirt. Now in and swinging the bat. Here's a pitch that fired low for a ball. It's 1-1. Hunt's batting average right now is 286. Had a home run in the Chicago series. His first major league home run. The day before yesterday. Hit it into the left field seat in Wrigley Field. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Watched low for ball two. It's two and one. Duke Snyder's on deck for the Mets. Hunt steps in. Holding it that high as he waits. 2-1 pitch. Breaking ball inside. 3-1 and one now to Hunt. Action continuing in the bullpen of the Pirates. Al Moran leads off the bag at second for the Mets. Paddock shakes off one sign and Hunt steps back out of the batter's box. Now we set again. Hunt in and ready. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Swung on, it's a ground ball. Taken at third by Bailey on his short hop. Guns across the first in time to Clendenin. And the side is retired. As rookie Bob Bailey moved across to take the ground ball on his short hop. And in the top of the sixth, the Mets got no runs on no hits. There was one Pirate error and one man left. The end of five and a half, the score is the Pirates three, the Mets two. Let's listen now to an old favorite brought up to date. Fine gold extra dry beer is the name of my beer, brisk and bright, refreshing brew. Rhyme gold flavors clean clear through. It's not sweet or bitter, that's why folks consider Rhyme gold is the beer to buy, and dry will tell you why. Rhyme gold extra dry has friends by the millions because it's beer as beer should taste. Brisk, bright, and clean clear through. Dry tells you why. Slowly aids for flavor, Rhyme gold taste to favor. Here is beer as beer should taste. That's the reason to make haste. Next time you're out shopping in a tavern popping, why not sing out clear and high? Rheingold Extra Dry, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. Think of Rheingold whenever you buy beer. It's not bitter, not sweet, it's a dry flavor treat. Won't you try Extra Dry Rheingold beer? In the bottom half of the sixth inning, the Pirates will lead off with Mo Plaskett. The catcher, he has been up twice. He singled a drive and a run the first inning, and he popped the first base in the third inning. Al Jackson with a wind-up in the pitch. Swung on. It's a ground ball deep to short, taken by Moran on the hole. Long throw, just in time. He got him. Mo Plaskett is grounded out. Moran to Cranepool. There's one away. And that brings up Bill Verdon, left-hand batting center fielder. He's been up twice. He flied to left, and he struck out swinging. Verdon's batting 286. Neal in on the edge of the grass at third. Breaking ball is right in there for a call. Strike one to Bill Verdon. Remember some of the defensive plays he pulled in the 1960 World Series? Well, he's been pulling them day in and day out out there in center field for the Pirates for a long time. Bill Verdon. Breaking ball swung on, full foul on the ground. Two-strike count. With two strikes on about it, Charlie Neal retreats to normal depth at third base. Pitch fired a little tight. It's one and two. Al Jackson has struck out two and walked four up to right now. Here's a swing and a fly ball to center field. Jim Hickman moves over. He has room and he makes the catch for the out. Two away. 
Say, there's no time like the present, and what better way to use it than to pour yourself a tall, cold glass of Rheingold Extra Dry. Enjoy a friendly glass of Rheingold Extra Dry along with the game. Bob Bailey's at the plate, right-hand batter, with two men out and nobody on base. Here's a pitch in there for a called strike. Well, at Washington, the marathon ball game is over in 13 innings. The Kansas City A's have defeated the Senators 12 to 10. Ronstadt the loser, Fisher the winner. Here's a pitch. It's high and away for ball. 1 1. Two men out, nobody on base. The Pirates three, the Mets two here. Al Jackson with a wind up and a 1 1 pitch. Change. It goes high and away. It's 2 and 1. We'll be on the air at 1 30 tomorrow afternoon, radio and television. And at 2 p.m. on Sunday, radio and television. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Low. Three balls, one strike to Bob Bailey. Bailey's batting average right now is 265. Jackson takes a long time, gets the sign for the 3 1 pitch. And it's high. Ball four. You walked him. And Bob Bailey goes to first base with the base on ball. That is the fifth walk given up by Jackson tonight. The first one he has given up since he walked Bill Mazeroski in the third inning. And coming up is Harvey Haddock. The kitten coming to the plate with two men out and Bailey the base runner at first. Haddock has been up twice. He grounded out pitcher to first, and he grounded out second to first. Hit the ball well in the fourth inning when he grounded out to Ron Hunt at second. Here's a swing, and it's out deep to left field since Thomas racing way back. And Frank can't get it. It's going all the way to the wall. Rounding third and coming out is Bob Bailey. Holding it second is Haddock with a double to the left field wall. The Pirates pick up another run and lead by a score of four to two. Alex is at second, two men out, and Dick Schofield coming up. An opposite field double, Frank Thomas off and racing to his left, tried to get back there to stab it. He made the lunge but couldn't get to it and rolled to the wall. Score it as a double and a run better down for Harvey Haddock. Switch hitting Dick Schofield is up now, that's right. He's walked, grounded out. Had an infield hit in the bottom half of the fourth inning. With the jacket on now, Harvey Haddock leads off the bag at second. There's a pitch swung on foul off, and right now in order to allow our stations to identify themselves. Well, it's got one run on one hit, no errors, and one left at the end of six. The score is the Pirates four, the Mets two, and coming in here now to carry the rest of the way, Bob Murphy. will be going along to the seventh inning. The Mets now two runs behind, and they'll have Duke Snyder coming out to lead off against Harvey Haddock. Time will be taken while Harvey goes to the dugout to get his glove because he hit the long double to the opposite field to drive in a big insurance run for the Bucks. Over the American League, the Orioles are off to a fast start. They have been striking late in the ball games to win, and in tonight's ball game, they were trailing by two coming into the last of the ninth inning, and Brooks Robinson and Dick Brown homer to tie the game up. The Birds have won nine and lost five. The White Sox and the A's are a half game back. The A's actually in a deadlock right now by virtue of winning the first game of that doubleheader tonight in Washington. I doubt seriously they'll be able to finish their second ball game. 
There are good seats available for the first night game of the home season on Monday night when Walter Alston brings the Los Angeles Dodgers into New York. That is a two-game series, Monday night and Tuesday night. Hope you're planning to be there. Following the Dodgers, the Houston Colt 45s with the American League betting champion now wearing a Houston uniform pistol, Pete Ronald. Seventh inning here with Duke Snyder up against Harvey Haddix. Duke hit a long drive to the outfield that got a run home his last time up. He leans in and takes the strike on the outside corner. Duke was behind on the count to Haddix, one ball and two strikes his last time up with the bases loaded. Then made it bid for an extra base hit, but Clemente pulled it down on the edge of the warning track. Inside at the letters, one ball, one strike. Frank Thomas on deck, and then Eddie Crane pool. Playing time of the game slowed up tonight due to the 11 walks handed out. Now the pitch by Haddix, a swing and a miss on a fastball. One ball and two strikes. Harvey, a veteran left-hander, a veteran of a... 12 years in the major leagues. Last year won nine and lost six. Now Snyder cocktails the bat around, cocks it, swinging a miss on a breaking ball. He struck him out. Had pitching a good ball game in relief of starter Al McBean, and for Harvey, strikeout number five. Haddix in relief has given up one run, allowed only three hits. Walked three and struck out five. Frank Thomas drew a walk in the first inning. Since then, has grounded out short to first and fouled out to Don Clendenin. Here's the pitch on the way. It's hit high into the air on the right side of the diamond. Calling for it, Schofield behind second, and Dick snags it for the out. He almost came in under that one too far and had to reach back over his head for it. He actually caught it over a stride on the right side of the diamond. Two outs and nobody on. Now the hitter is 18-year-old Eddie Cranepool. Eddie has drawn a walk. Behind on the count, two strikes against Haddix. He hit an outside pitch on a line for a double down the left field line and bounced out pitcher to first. Way inside, it's ball one. Two outs, nobody on. Top of the seventh, New York trailing 4-2. to two. Curve outside and low, and Eddie lets it go. Ball two, two and oh. Jay Hook will be on the mound for New York tomorrow, the second of the three-game set. Swing and a miss on a fastball, two and one. Pirates have been a fast-starting club. They got off great last year. They won ten straight. Then it was Jay Hook right here in Forbes Field who went the route on a five-hitter to snap the ten-game winning streak for the Bucks and a nine-game losing streak for the Mets. A high, twisting pop foul. This will be in the crowd and out of play. Even count two and two on Eddie Crane Pool. Game in Houston starting an hour later than our game tonight here in Pittsburgh. They have a mound duel going, and their game may be over before this one is. Houston now hitting in the last of the seventh inning. The Cole 45's leading one to nothing. Swing and a miss on a high hard one. Green Bull goes down swinging. There is the best inning of the game for Harvey Haddock. He gets some one, two, three and strikes out two of the three. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. Now at the end of six and a half innings, the score, the Pirates four and the Mets two. Ever notice the annex? The third base coach will go through to hide his fans. Well, you know the sort of thing, hand swinging, tugging on the bill of the cap, walking up and down. Well, watching the third base coach is part of enjoying the game. Those enjoying a good cigarette. For me, it's Viceroy. Because Viceroy tastes the way I'd like a filler cigarette to taste. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Now, what do I mean by the taste that's right? Well, fans, if you smoke all seven leading filter brands, you'll find some try their hardest to taste like the unfiltered kind. Result? Well, they taste too strong. Others take all the fun and flavor out of smoking. They taste too light. The Viceroy's not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Viceroy, in the familiar soft pack, 
or the exclusive new slide top case. Now Pittsburgh has Ted Savage to lead off against Al Jackson last half of the seventh inning. Base hits have been hard to come by. Pirates four runs on five hits. They've had six left on base. The Mets two runs, three hits. Outside and lowest ball one to Ted Savage. Mets have had nine left on. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Roberto Clemente, the on-deck batter, and then Don Glendennon. Jackson contending with two, three, and four in the course there batting order. A drive hit hard to left center, a base hit. This ball is rolling all the way back toward the wall. Savage is legging it on his way towards second. He takes the turn at second, and he'll hold up there. Now the ball is struggling, and he brings for third. The throw to third, save to third. A two-base set and an error on Jim Hickman. Ball was juggled on the relay throw coming in by Al Moran. We'll wait to see. There may be a correction on the official story. At any rate, Ted Savage is now on third. Nobody out. He really hit a vicious line drive. Ball rolled all the way back to the wall in left center and had to be run down by Hickman, who fired to Moran, but Moran dropped the ball. And the minute he dropped it, Savage, who had stopped around second, broke at full speed for third and goes on to third base. Now the infield has to come in with Roberto Clemente hitting. Jackson using the full windup. Here's his pitch. Way up by his ball one. Ted Savage has really hit the ball hard in this game. He had a tremendous home run and now a line double. Don Rowe, a left-hander, right-hander Tracy Stallard are up in the bullpen. The Pirates have Joe Gibbon throwing in the bullpen. Now the pitcher on the way to Roberto. Breaking ball over for a call strike. One ball and one strike. Now two in the bullpen for the Bucks. Tommy Siska, right-hander, and Joe Gibbon, the southpaw. Pirates lead 4-2. to two. We're in the last half of the seventh inning. Crowd of over 10,000 watching the opener of this three-game set. Jackson out of his windup. Now the pitch. Chuchu moving off to his right on a low breaking ball. Two balls and one strike. Two and one the count now on Roberto Clemente. Nobody out. Pitch thrown by Jackson way outside. It's ball three. Al, who has thrown a lot of pitches in this ball game, may be tiring here in the seventh. That's with the infield in. Ted Savage on third. Nobody out. And a three and one count on Roberto Clemente. Clemente 0 for three in the game. Down comes the pitch. He reaches for a curve, a pop foul back toward the dugout. Juju hoping for a play, but it's out of reach. Lands in the crowd just beyond the reach of Juju Coleman. Now we have a full count on Ariba, three and two. For Pittsburgh, Ted Savage has hit the ball the hardest in the game. Don Glendennon perhaps has been the most exciting in the game. Full count now. Three and two on Roberto Clemente. Now the wind-up pitch by Jackson. A drive in the air to right field, hit hard in front of it is Snyder. Just makes the grab. Coming down the line and in the score is Ted Savage. The ball was hit hard to right field. Scored a sacrifice fly and a run batted in for Roberto Clemente. Now the Pirates lead five to two. For Pittsburgh, Ted Savage has driven in two runs with a two-run homer. Paul Plaskett, Harvey Haddix, and Roberto Clemente have each driven in one. 
The hitter now is Dan Clendenin. Clendenin has drawn a walk, doubled and ground about one for two. Big right-hand batter waiting. Swing on a curve and a miss. Strike one. Although he's 6'4 and a 200-pounder, Clendenin can really fly. And he also has the daring to upset a pitcher when he's on the baseline for those long leads. He goes after it again. Strike two. Looks like the slider by Al Jackson. Don Clendenin batting in the cleanup spot for Danny Murtaugh. Bill Mazeroski has been moved up this year to hitting number five. Mets out of the outfield around toward left against Clendenin. Right-hand batter cocks the bat, lets it go, and it's across the visor of the cap. One ball and two strikes. ball. He lays off. It's taken high on the count even. Two and two. Don Swall, who is recovering from a bout with intestinal flu, will pitch tomorrow against the New York Mets' Jay Hook. Now Clint Dunnan swishing the bat around. Cocks it off the right shoulder. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Al Jackson fanning Don Clint Dunnan. Third strikeout for Al Jackson brings up Bill Mazeroski. Maz has been up three times. Twice he has drawn a walk, and his last time at bat he flied to right. More of a line drive than a fly ball caught by Duke Snyder. Last ball at the knees, just a little bit low. One ball and no strikes. Mazeroski hitting at 267. And although he hit on the number eight spot in the batting order, most of last year he wound up leading the Bucks in runs batted in. Outfield swung around toward left. The pitch to Mazeroski, a curve that breaks right in there. One ball and one strike. Pirates scored three of their five runs in the first inning. Al Jackson was in the dugout a long time while the Mets got one run on the top of the inning. Change up, hammered on the ground down to third. Neal fielding it behind the bag. The long peg is in time, and Mazeroski is out. So the run will be an, uh, an unearned run. One run, one hit, one error, and none left on in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Seven innings complete, and the score, the Pittsburgh Pirates five and the New York Mets two. In other games, they have gone seven innings now. The Houston Colt 45s lead Cincinnati by a score of two to nothing. Bob Bruce for Houston and Jim Maloney for the Reds. Both the Colt 45s and Cincinnati will be coming into New York on the next homestand of the Mets, which will open against the Dodgers Monday night for the first night game of the home season. In a day game, the Phillies beat Chicago 5-2, to two, a three-hitter for Art Mahaffey. Glenn Hobby was the loser. Wes Covington and Johnny Callison homered for the Phillies and Billy Williams for Chicago. Nothing yet on the two night games on the West Coast, Milwaukee at San Francisco and St. Louis at Los Angeles. In the American League, in the first game of a Twilight Night doubleheader, the game went 13 before the A's pushed over two to win the game from Washington, 12 to 10. Bill Fisher, fourth pitcher used by Eddie Lopat, the winner. Jim Bronstad, number six, used by Mickey Vernon, the loser. Eddie Brinkman, Chuck Assis, and Jim King, and Bobby Del Greco homers. They're in the 11th in Baltimore now. The Angels and Birds are tied 3-3. It took late inning home runs by Brooks Robinson and Dick Brown to tie it up. Robert Stock and now Burnside for the Birds. McBrad, Spring, Nelson, and Morgan for the Angels. Wagner has hit two in that game. They go to the ninth inning in Detroit with the Tigers leading Minnesota by a score of 3-2. But Bob Allison has just homered in the ninth inning to tie it up. Terry Fox has relieved Don Massey. Roland, Stang, Lasher, and Roggenberg pitching now for Minnesota. We'll have a new pitcher in the game for the Pirates as we go to the eighth inning. Harvey Haddix had his shoulder tightened up just a little bit, and Danny Murtaugh, not wishing to take any chances on his valuable left-hander, is in the game now with right-hander Tommy Sisk. 
In addition, Harvey has pitched longer in the game tonight than in any previous outing so far this year. So Charlie Neal is up against Tommy Sisk, and the right-handers pitches over, strike one call. Tommy Sisk, making his fifth appearance, has worked a total of seven innings and given up only one earned run. So he has been off to an impressive start. His earned run average, 1.27. One ball, one strike to Charlie Neal. Last year, the Pirates brought Tommy Fisk up from the minor leagues, and he made his debut against the New York Mets in the Polo Grounds. Here's the windup by the right-hander. His pitch, Neal holds up, and it's low, ball two. Tommy, a right-hander, was born in Ardmore, Oklahoma, now makes his winter home in Long Beach, California. Ground ball, bounce towards second, comes up on a big hop for Mazeroski. The flip toss across to Don Clendenin, and Neal is out. Harvey Haddix turning in a superb relief job, worked six and a third. He allowed one run, he gave up just three hits. He walked three, struck out six, committed one ball. So this is Tommy Sisk winding the pitch to Choo Choo. Choo Choo bluffing in a bun and the pitch is over a strike call. Last year at Columbus, Sisk won 10, lost 12, and with the Pirates, won none, lost two. Choo Choo tried to bunt, tried to dump it down at third baseline, but he failed to get it, strike two. Tommy Sisk, a 21-year-old right-hander who's had only three years in pro ball. He throws hard, and he gets a good sinker off his fastball. Now the right-hander cranks up the pitch to Choo Choo outside and low, one-handed by Mo Plaskett. One ball and two strikes. New York, two runs, three hits. Nine left on. And for the Bucks, five runs, six hits, and six left on. Fastball outside, Choo Choo taking in the count even now, two balls and two strikes. Al Moran waiting in the on deck circle. They keep the bullpen busy for the Mets here on the top of the eighth inning. Ground ball hit down to first, fielded by Don Clendenin. The race to the bag, and he makes the unassisted play. Two men down. Now the hitter is Al Moran. Al has two for three in the game tonight. Singles to left field. And he raced to second on a fly ball to left that was dropped by Ted Savage his last time up. Moran, who seems to be a little more relaxed with each ball game, is now starting to get his share of the base hits. Now the wind-up pitch by Susk inside of the knee is a real blazer. He had plenty on that fastball. One ball and no strikes. Al Jackson has pitched a real plucky ball game tonight, one of the few times that Al had to battle his control. He has thrown a lot of pitches. In the dirt, no damage done with nobody on ball two. He may have been handicapped by the fact that McBean was wild in the first inning and walked four men, finally forcing a run in. So Al had to remain in the dugout for a long time after completing his pregame warm-ups before he took the mound, and he was wild, walked three men. Gave up a two-run homer and a run-scoring single. Now the 2-0 pitch to Moran. He takes all away, trying to get on base, and the count is ball three. Year, the Bucks were an extremely tough ball club for the Mets. They won 16 out of the 18. Pitching 3 0, right in there for a call strike. Oh, 
Five teams will be coming into New York on the next homestand, the first lengthy homestand of the year, opening on Monday night. Strike two called. Again, Moran taking all away, trying to get on. That's three runs behind, so Moran is going all out, trying to get on base to get something in motion here. Al Jackson is scheduled up next. Casey has the bullpen ready in case he needs a hitter. A slow ground ball hit down to third, charged by Bob Bailey. He pegs on the run. It's in time on a good play by Bob Bailey. That's the second good fielding play in this game by the rookie third baseman. So the Mets are out in order in the eighth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and then left on. At the end of seven and a half innings, the score... The Pittsburgh Pirates 5 and the New York Mets 2. You can throw away your opener forever. That's right. You don't need an opener to take off the top of Rheingold's new Chug-A-Mug. Why, you don't even need a glass. Rheingold's new Chug-A-Mug is the first beer container with a top that's so easy to open. And a wide mouth to drink from. To open Chug-A-Mug, pull the metal tab on top straight out and up. That's right. Chug-A-Mug. No openers, no glasses. No foolin'. Chug-a-mug is filled with 12 ounces of famous Rheingold Extra Dry. The beer with a taste that's brisk and bright and clean clear through. If you haven't already enjoyed Rheingold Extra Dry in the new Chug-a-mug, get a move on. There's a six-pack waiting for you at your dealers now. Chug-a-mug holds the same and costs the same as the 12-ounce can. And there's no deposit to pay. My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer in the brand new white mug. Now in the home eighth inning, Casey is putting Tracy Stallard in the game. Al Jackson leaving after pitching seven innings in which he gave up five runs. Allowed six hits, walked five, and struck out three. Al Jackson threw a lot of pitches in this game due to the walks that he gave up in the early part of the game, and it was a struggle for him all the way. But he is one of the outstanding competitors among all of the Major League pitchers, and he battled and stayed right with it. For Tracy Stallard, big hard-throwing right-hander from Virginia, this will be his fifth outing, all in relief. His last outing was against the Phillies in relief when he was bothered by a wildness and walked a couple. Prior to that, he lost the game to the Braves in Milwaukee after pitching superbly, only to get beat with two down in the ninth inning on a home run by Lee May. Mo Flaskett, the catcher, right-hand batter, is up against Tracy Stallard now. Last half of the eighth inning. Blazing fastball over strike one call. And Tracy looks like he could throw a strawberry through a battleship. His arm bothered him some while pitching in Seattle last year. Foul ball back, no play. He was unable to throw his slider very much while playing for Johnny Pesky out of Seattle in the Coast League, but his arm has been perfectly all right all spring, and he really has been humming. The only thing he needs is to get a little better control of that curveball. Now Tracy with a two-strike count on Mo Plaskett fires. Strike three called. He hooked it on the outside corner. One away, last of the eighth inning, and on the bat will be the veteran center fielder, Bill Verdon. Verdon 0 for 3 has fly to short left and struck out sky to center. Early in the year, particularly for the night games when it's a little bit chillier, you see many of the hitters wearing those golf gloves. Now Stallard winding. Here's the pitch on the way. Breaking ball in the dirt out in front of the plate. One ball and no strikes. Bob Bailey, the rookie third baseman, is the on-deck hitter. The Mets in the ninth inning will have Jackson schedule a leadoff, then the top of the batting order. In the dirt again, ball two, two and oh. So far tonight, the Mets have been held to three hits. The 
Bean started, went out in the first inning, then Harvey Haddix went six and a third, and Tommy Sisk has worked an inning. And the Hummer gets the outside corner for a call strike, two and one. Now Stallard on the way. Misses down around the knees inside. It's ball three, and we have a three and one count on Bill Verdon. Now Stallard over the head. The three one pitch. Ball four. It misses outside, and Bill Verdon is on with a walk. Right now, before Bob Bailey steps in, we'll step out for station identification. You're listening to the New York Mets activity at 810 on your dial, WGY, Schenectady. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kinder from Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. The Bucks are hitting against Tracy Stallard in the last of the eighth inning. Bob Bailey is up for the fourth time. Twice is grounded out third to first, reached with a walk in the sixth inning and later scored. Outside and low, it's ball one. <laughs> Bailey has good power. They play him a stride toward left in the outfield. Moran shades toward the hole on the left side of the infield with Neal guarding the line behind the bag at third. A throw to first, not in time. Now Tracy Stallard comes to the stop, and the pitch to Bailey, right through there for a call strike. One ball, one strike. Stallard's bread and butter pitch is fastball. He has a good one, and he has a great curveball when he can get it over. But sometimes he has trouble getting it to break right for him. Now Stallard in the set position. Kicks the leg. Around comes the arm. He tried the curve. It missed outside and low. Two balls and a strike. Eddie Cranepool holding against the runner, Bill Verdon. Pitcher on the way gets the inside corner to Bob Bailey for a call strike, and now it's two and two. Don Rowe continuing to work in the bullpen for New York. Stallard will be scheduled to lead off in the ninth inning. Doug Harvey looking the ball over, finds a speck or some flaw, and puts it out of play. game in Detroit. The Tigers were leading 3-2 to two going to the ninth inning, but the Minnesota Twins broke through to get five in the top of the ninth. So they lead 7-3 to three with Detroit now hitting in the last half of the ninth inning. Right here, a 2-2 two two count on Bob Bailey. Bill Verdon on first and one down. Here's the pitch on the way. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Tracy Stallard fanning Bob Bailey. Well, the Cincinnati Reds, a team tabbed by many to make a real strong run on the pennant this year, are off to a slow start. You can bet the big bear, Freddie Hutchinson, is really prowling the corridors. Tonight, right-hander Bob Bruce checked the Cincinnati Reds on one base hit. Houston winning 2 to nothing. The only hit was in the first inning by Veda Penson. Well, Ralph, I know uh, the big bear is a pretty good friend of yours. What do you think he, how do you think he's feeling right now? I just, I'm real happy I'm in Pittsburgh and he's down there. That's all I can say. I wouldn't want to be within 2,000 miles of him tonight. That swarm of mosquitoes wouldn't dare come out on a night like this. Now Tommy Susk is up, right-hand batter. And the pitch is outside and low ball one. Let's see, the, they were off to a slow start last year, but then they really got going. Now 
Ross Ballard in relief. The pitch to Tommy Sisk. Low and outside. A throw to first, not in time. Choo Choo really snaps the peg down to Eddie Cranepool. And Stallard has gone behind the pitcher 2 0. Fastball over for a call strike, and Tommy was taking all away. Reds, by losing tonight on the year now, have won five and lost nine. Houston has won six and lost 12. 2 1 pitch by Stallard, a blazer that misses outside, and the count goes three and one. Well, even though the Reds are off to a slow start, they are now five and nine. They're actually only four games off the top. You know, when Fred was a pitcher for Detroit, and when he would lose, he'd walk home. This doesn't sound like a whole lot, but he lived 10 miles in the ballpark. Pitch thrown is inside, and he walks the opposing pitcher, ball four. You know, for many years, Ted Williams always walked to the ballpark just to get the exercise. Well, Fred Hutchinson didn't walk home for the exercise. He was just trying to cool out. Remember the polo grounds last year when the Mets beat him at Bigman? He stayed in the dugout for a half an hour after the game was over. He told me later that he just couldn't afford to go inside. He didn't want to talk to anybody. He was afraid of what he might say. Now switch hitting Dick Schofield will be batting from the left side against right-hander Tracy Stallard. The Bucks now have Bill Verdon on second, Tommy Sisko on first. There are two away. We're in the last of the eighth inning with the Pirates in front, five to two. Inside and low, Choo Choo lunging off to his right. Ralph, they always say baseball is a game of slumps, whether it's batting average or pitching wise or whether it's games won and lost. Sometimes you get the slumps early and sometimes you get them late, but you get them sooner or later, don't you? Well, you can't stay out of them. It's something that's part of baseball. You sure hate to get in them, but you're awfully happy to get out. Now Stallard with his delivery, and the fastball is down the middle for a call strike on Schofield. One ball, one strike. Well, we hope you have a good supply of Ryan Gold Extra Dry Beer on hand for the weekend. It'll add to your enjoyment of the Mets action from Pittsburgh. Now Stallard up in pitching position, fires a breaking ball inside and low, and Choo Choo had to really lunge for that one. Two balls and a strike. Now Larry Benares and Kim McKenzie are both working in the bullpen down the right field line for the New York Mets. Ron Hunt, a young man on the go, once again makes a run on the base runner, Bill Verdon, to keep him close. Schofield holding the bat high. A 2-1 pitch. Ball three, it's outside. And Tracy Stallard's control once again giving him some difficulties as he comes on in relief here in the last of the eighth inning. Tracy has been bothered by wildness in the early going. His history does not indicate that he has been bothered in the past by wildness too much. They've gone 10 innings now in Baltimore with the Angels and Birds tied 3-3. A high twisting pop foul. No play. This will be back in the crowd. It's 3-2. and two. So the Orioles now have a 19-year-old youngster in that game that has now gone to the 12th. I'll check that. It's not Johnny Miller. It's going to be Stu Miller. And he's far from being a 19-year-old youngster. About as far as he can be. Take some of his pitches about 19 years to get to the plate. He's felt like a sprain. He's back lunging at him. Full count, three and two. Stallard looking into Coleman. Burton leading off second. Tommy Sisk leading off first. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Bucks have a 5-2 lead. 
Now the payoff pitch by Stallard fouled back toward the press box and out of play. The runner's in motion on three and two with two down, and he'll have to head back. Both victories by the Mets in Chicago were in games played in fast time. The opening game in an hour and 52 minutes, yesterday two hours and 20 minutes. Game tonight slowed down in playing time due to the wildness of the pitchers early in the game, but it has not been slowed down in exciting moments. This was a 3-2 ball game until the last of the sixth when the Pirates got one. They added one in the seventh. There go the runners. A drive hit hard down the right field line, and it's a foul ball. Into the seats as Schofield really got around on that one. With the runners going, it's fouled into the right field seats. It's all over in Detroit. The Minnesota Twins with five in the ninth inning beat the Tigers by a score of seven to five. Rocky Calavito hit one in the ninth, but he came with the bases empty. Gary Ragenberg, the winning pitcher in relief, the loser starter, Don Massey. Now Schofield gets out of the batter's box as Fowler takes too much time to suit him. Gracie has walked two and struck out two here in the last of the eighth. He's now three and two on Schofield. Now the payoff pitch. Ground ball hit down to Eddie Craneboom. He grabs the big hop. He'll make the play himself, and the side is out. In the eighth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, two left on. Now eight innings complete. The score, the Pirates five and the Mets two. Well, you've heard us talking a lot about the new faces blending with the old of last year for the new edition of the New York Mets. You know, the Mets have something else brand new. It's their new official song called... Meet the Mets. I'm sure plenty of you have already heard it. It's very catchy, and there are two versions, one instrumental and one vocal. They are available to you, and there are a limited number of the first edition records, so I'm sure you'll want to get yours right away. To obtain your copy of Meet the Mets records, send $1 to Met Official Song, Polo Grounds, New York, 39, New York. Marv Thronberry has come out of the dugout, and Marvelous will hit for Tracy Stallard as we go to the ninth inning, New York three behind. Stallard in the ninth inning. They know Marv every place he goes. Now Tommy Sisk throws in the last of his warm-up takes, and we're set to go in the ninth inning. Mets on this road trip have taken two out of three. They lost Monday night in Philadelphia 8-6, to six, and they threw a real scare into the Phillies in the ninth inning. They were trailing 8-3 to three going into the ninth inning, but picked up three and had the bases loaded when the Phillies hung on to win it. They then took the two games from the Cubs in Chicago. Now Susk, the right-hander, pitches a foul ball, a whack back of stairs, and out of play. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the ninth, five to two games. Tomorrow, Don Swall against Jay Hook. Marv started to go, and then he checked up in time. One ball, one strike. Well, they have the second game underway in Washington. The Senators got three in the first. Tom Cheney against Ted Bosfield. Don Lockett, a three-run homer. Two high, it's ball two, two and one. First game went 13 innings, with the A's getting two in the 13th to beat Washington 12 to 10. The 
pitching gym of the night turned in by right-hander Bob Bruce, a one-hit shutout over Cincinnati. A high fly ball hits a deep center field. Ambling back is Bill Burden and Dustin left center. He has it for the out. Thornberry hit that one high and hard. One away and nobody on now in the ninth inning. Top of the batting order for Jim Hickman. Jim walked his first three times up tonight, was struck out in the sixth inning. Al McBean was the buck starter. Wild walked four, left the game for Harvey Hattie. And he pitches in, strike one call. Harvey quickly given a two-run lead on three runs in the bottom half of the first by the Pirates, including a two-run homer by Ted Savage. Breaking ball taken outside and low. One ball, one strike on Jim Hickman. Bob Veely, a hard-throwing left-hander, is in the bullpen for Pittsburgh now. And Hickman takes a pitch over for a call strike, one and two. Danny Murtaugh has a lot of left-hand pitching he can throw at the National League clubs this year. Tommy Suska, right-hander, winds and pitches. Outside and low, two and two on Jim Hickman. One away, nobody on. Suska in relief. Has retired four straight. A high fly to center field. Just walking back to draw a beat on this one is Bill Burton. He's camped under it. Two down. Ball sounded good going off the bat, but when you hit him straight away in this ballpark, your chances are mighty slim. Like trying to hit a ball out of Yellowstone Park. Now the hitter is Ron Hunt. Ron has 0 for 3 in the game, but on base once, he drew a walk back in the fourth inning. Mets have been held at three base hits by McBean, Haddix, and Sis. Foul ball off to the right off the bat of Ron and the count strike one. Remember, we'll be broadcasting and televising the game tomorrow back to New York. We'll be on at 1.30. Baltimore, the Angels are out in the, third, in the 12th without scoring. They go to the last of the 12th inning, tied 3-3. Ground ball bounced down to third. Big hop for third sacker Bailey. The pig to first, and the game is over. So Tommy Sisk in relief retired six in a row, working the eighth and ninth. In the ninth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. Final score, the Pittsburgh Pirates five and the New York Mets two. And we'll have the line score and wrap up for you in a minute. Remember that Monday night, the New York Mets will be home to open a 15-day homestand. The Los Angeles Dodgers are in to open the homestand with the first night game of the home season. The Dodgers are in for two games on Monday night and Tuesday night. Brooklyn's Tommy Davis, the National League batting champion, Maury Wills, Sandy Koufax, Don Drysdale, Ron Fairley, the Southern California Redhead, off to a fast start. All will be on hand, and the gates will open at 5.30 p.m. each night, Monday night and Tuesday night, for the convenience of the fans coming out for the games. Well, we checked the rule books the other day, and we dug up a Ryan Gold riddle for all you baseball fans. Now, you may know that when a base runner is hit by a batted ball, the batter automatically gets credit for a base hit. The runner is automatically out. But who gets credit for the put out? Well, think about that one for a moment. Well, if you know your baseball, and I'm sure you do, you know the fielder nearest the runner gets credit for the put out. And if you know your beer, you'll surely know this. Two little words, extra dry, tell you why Rheingold has a taste no other beer can match. They tell you that Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costlier way for a taste that's brisk and bright and clean, clear through. So why not find that out for yourself? Fans enjoy a cool, refreshing glass of Rheingold extra dry along with every New York Mets game. Final score tonight, 5-2. to two. The Pirates winning the opener of the series. And for the details about tonight's game, Ralph Kiner. Well, the first inning actually contained the complete ball game. It took 50 minutes to play. 15 men were up in the inning. For the Mets, they got in front on starting pitcher Al McC-